It's the god awful gospel hour. God awful gospel. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything <laughs> sounds good. All right. You sure? <laughs> yeah. All right. I got every I got our levels all right. We're trying to come up with something that would offend the most God awful gospel show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As many people as possible. All right. Gospel hour. That's right. Hour. <laughs> That's right. It's the god awful gospel hour. Autistic people will be mad if it's not an hour. We're gonna offend <laughs> them too. We're getting everybody. It's been over an hour lately. We were trying an to hour think and of sixteen a, minutes is about as close as I can get it down to. We're trying to think of a phrase that would offend the most people on earth. It was like the queen fucked the pope in his ass and soccer sucks. You pretty much get earth with that. All Catholics all people that the queen's over a bunch of nations. Everybody loves soccer. I mean, go fuck yourself with your own dick yeah. is a good way. I mean, that encompasses. I think that's in a lot of languages. I bet, like, the Polish version of that is really nasty. Oh, uh, I'd like to hear it in <laughs> French. <laughs> it sounds very sexy. Good down de mierda. Go fuck yourself with your own dick. So Aaron Cheatham is here? Yeah, we're here with Aaron Wait, Cheatham. Wait, has it started? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying all types of regrettable things already. <laughs> no, we can beep whatever you want to with beep. Editing, <laughs> with editing, there's no real start and end of anything. It's no one ever you said anything. I don't know what yeah. you're talking about. I you just didn't say walked nothing. in the door. How's it going? <laughs> 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 that was another guy. This AI, I'm being recreated. Yes, this is not. This is, <laughs> this is uh, actually an Egyptian person with Aaron Cheatham's voice. AI generated on top of <laughs> pretending to be that yeah. so that it can say whatever. I'm the dude pretending to be a dude <laughs> pretending to be another dude. <laughs> so who are your guys? Who are your favorites of guys? Of, of guys? Com- of comedians. Is, so like is this a Mark up- Maron? Who are your guys? Yeah, who, who are your guys? guys? Are we good? Are we good? Yeah. Are we uh, good? We're not mad at each well, other like, anymore. What was the we? first comedy? Did you ever buy a comedy CD? Yeah. Yeah, I bought uh, the first comedy CD I bought was uh, Chris Rock. Yeah. Bigger and blacker. Okay. That's uh, one of your biggest. Uh well, I mean at that time it was like I at that time I was just buying CDs yeah. like crazy. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, hey, Chris Rock, I like that special. I yeah. bought that. Um my guys like growing up, it was Damon Wayne's. Yeah. Damon Wayne's oh, was yeah. like the dude. Yeah. Like I think he's massively underrated as a comedian. Like as a stand up. Yeah. People think about his movies and stuff first, but like Damon as a stand up was cold man like that was my dude damon uh carlos mencia uh i know that's probably a dirty word to say carlos mencia but like that was the first like he was i I used to record every hbo half hour special hour special like i I had on cassette tapes back in the day and i had like tapes eight hour tapes of just like comedy and shit and mencia popped up on there a lot and then when i started doing comedy in san antonio like i met him yeah and like he was the first big name person that ever took me to the side you never and stole like, some of your shit or nothing not him but some <laughs> other people from out there that rolled with him did yeah. uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna air nobody out right now but yeah somebody <laughs> else stole the, my uh, shit. universal mind whatever fucking no no he legit <laughs> stole my shit we talked about it parallel thinking yeah, right? parallel. And, uh, we, we talked about it he told me he thought it was funny and then next thing you know actually i didn't realize until in the past couple of years that this motherfucker recorded a special yeah. and and had stole my joke. I oh. didn't realize I didn't know it know it until I saw he came to Cap City and the clip they used to advertise this dude was him doing my joke. Oh shit. And I was like, This is some bullshit. Yeah. This motherfucker <laughs> selling tickets off a joke he stole from me. So you gotta take it back. Do a better back at him. Well what I did was <laughs> at the at the end of my first special, I uh I have a cassette I have a I had a tape of me doing that joke in 2006 nice. years before okay. he recorded that special the one of the early runnings of that joke yeah and i put that at the end of my special time stamp yeah. with and, date and <laughs> you already <laughs> shafir him oh I did. yeah i remember because yeah. it has the vhs slash dates in the top corner uh, doesn't it you had the old i had the, I had the footage of the kids that we mm-hmm. made look old school but then at the very end was a real uh, yeah. old school footage from a cassette tape yeah that uh when it when again when my boy Justin gave me the camcorder to record shit at the house, I was like, let me see if this old tape I got plays on here. Yeah. And I put it in. I was like, oh shit, there's a fucking special or yeah, not special. This is a performance of me this from fucking 2006, <laughs> and it has the joke in it. And it had the joke. That's awesome. That it, that because I, I was like, oh, this is from that time period. I bet I, I and sure enough, like eight minutes into the tape, I'm telling the joke, and I go, this motherfucker took it word for word. Yeah. And and so I put it at the end. Of my special, that's a little Easter egg. If anybody's wondering why, at the end of my special, there's a clip of me. Like you can see a, a joke that I did in the special, 
me doing it in 2006 when yeah, I first wrote it. Yeah. Uh, and it, so it was like, you got that. Then right after that is a bit that <clears throat> stole and yeah. did. Yeah. And, but, uh, and it's, it's right there. Yeah, the six, years, six years before he recorded that special, there's me telling that joke. I'm going to yeah. put a beep in there so it sounds like you actually told us the person's name. Fantastic. <laughs> it's I like the care. opposite version of it, like the opposite effect of a beep. You could just put Bismarcky beatboxing. Yeah, <laughs> nah, I'm, nah, I'm yeah right. <laughs> but uh, Damon Wings was my dude. But Carlos took me back in the day, and he like he he shot game to me, man. He was like, you know, he, he gave me some sage advice that yeah. – that, that I still think about to this day. Yeah. You know, and every time he came to San Antonio, I'd go I'd go out and every single time, like without fail, yo, my man. And he'd come pull me over, check on me, see how I'm doing. Yeah. You know, check on how the career is going. Okay. Whatever advice he he would throw he can throw, he would throw to me. It was like yeah. every time. All the way up till uh the last time I saw him was right before Mind Dimensia. Or it was right after Mind Dimensia came out. And I d he had told me, I got something coming down, man. Wow. And I got a show coming up on Comedy Central. It's going to be right after Chappelle's show. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's big time, man. And then and then it turned out to be the replacement <laughs> for Chappelle's show. <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, all the way up all the way up to then, after, like, the first season of Mind Dementia was the last time I saw him. And he came down. And he had the little guy with him mm -hmm. that was on the show. And that dude, like, tried to bogart me at the line. Like, I was walking up to the line. Yeah. You got people trying to meet him. And, I'm, and he's like, hey. You can't just cut line. Yeah. He's like, and Carlos was like, nah, man, that's my dude. Hold yeah. on. Like, Carlos told him, like, chill, that's my guy. And uh, he let me just, like, I cut the whole line. And he was like, come back around. We're going to kick it. But right okay. now he pulled out a, one of his DVDs of the special he had just released. He signed uh, Keep up, keep Working Hard. Okay. Or Keep Up the Hard Work. Uh, hit me up. Carlos Mencia signed it on the DVD. Well, this is good redemption and, story for Carlos. Yeah, it he's, is. He's and, a good guy. I'm not. I'm not saying he ain't wrong and he ain't do no bullshit. I'm just saying nobody's that perfect. My my experience with him at at a young age, as a, as a kid, I was like, this is that guy. And then when I met him, when I got into comedy, he yeah. was. You couldn't ask for anything better, like yeah. from somebody that you looked up to as a child. Yeah. You know, there's other people that I've met, and I was like, oh, well, I'm glad cancer got him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say Robert Schimmel, but I'm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> my first tape that I got was Stephen Wright. The uh, Boston guy, he's bald. He's like, he's like a dry dude. The, the guy on the couch and he's kind of like. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That guy. Yeah. He's, he's a Mitch Hedberg style kind of, you know, one liner, one -liner. jokes. Yeah. He had an Oreo joke. Mm. He said, "I, I'm very, I find my dental hygienist extremely attractive, so I eat an entire box of Oreos every time before I go to the dentist. So it takes, yours was better." You did a way better <laughs> Oreo joke, but I was thinking about your, you know, dip, dip versus twist. Uh huh. And I actually, you know, I agree. I dip. Yeah. Everyone should dip. You're a proper Christian. But I, yes, I worship the Lord, and I dip my Oreos. Welcome it to the gospel, the gospel hour. Gospel yeah, hour. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like when girls twist, because you got to lick that white stuff off of there, and then you get to watch her lick the white stuff off the Oreo and go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But everyone should, should still get it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's like when a girl orders a can of beer and she's like, no, can I get a bottle? And then you get to watch her have the bottle the whole time. It's a little better than watching a girl drink out of uh, the can. You know, I prefer the can because they can't see the fizzing when you – never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know Did I tell you that Cosby was a myth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hero. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the <laughs> it's not see-through. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and have a little sip of this here. <laughs> so you play UFC games and uh, WWF games on uh, PS4? What do you got, PS4? I, no, I don't. I, I got an Xbox. Okay. I, I, left, I was a PlayStation 1 guy. I was a PlayStation 2 guy. Yeah. And then after that, I had a roommate that had a PlayStation 3, so I didn't have to get that. Yeah. And then I had a roommate that had a PlayStation 4, so I didn't have to get that. Um, Did you ever but, play Fight Night? Remember Fight Night? You want to talk about fight night? I'll yeah. ruin your fucking life in some fight night. You don't, <laughs> you don't, you don't, you don't want to see me on these sticks. No, I'm ready to get online with you. I, 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 I still play fight night. Okay. I still play fight night champion right now. Like it's like at least twice a year. There's there's certain games that I always go back to. Yeah. Like I just wrapped up uh, the Mass Effect trilogy. Yeah. Again. Uh, the fancier one. They redid everything. Yeah, I wanted to play with the when they redid it. So yeah, the, the tight fonts. This is this is the the ridiculous shit I did. I. Played through one, two, and three, in anticipation of the ele the legendary yeah. edition coming out. Played through one, two, three. Legendary edition comes out. 
and I played one through one, two, three again because yeah. it came out. I was like, I got to see There's what's a trailer different from here. Four. There's a four coming. It, so they say. And listen, after, a, like a lot, a lot of people hated on Andromeda. Yeah. And, and okay, yeah. Andro- all right, it, it was, but it wasn't as bad. I don't think Andromeda was as bad as everybody no. said it Every was. Every game critic thinks they're a developer now, and they're they, like, this is poor design, and they never shit designed on shit. It, but they shit it on it so hard that they were like, yeah, we're pulling the plug on Mass Effect for a minute. Yeah. And I didn't think, I mean, the first Mass Effect was trash compared to 2 and 3. Yeah. But, but I'm talking I, about I, from I, I gameplay. Two, yeah, 2 is like the pinnacle. Dude, It went because yeah. it went from the, the gameplay and the mechanics of the first one is so annoying. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you get to the second one, it's like, fuck yeah, fine, I can just play. Yeah. Because it's so tedious to go through Mass right. Effect 1. You got to hold down the right bumper, pull up the wheel, pick the th- it, it was. And then when you finally get to map the shit to a button, you just bop, 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 get it in. That was already like light years ahead. When you had, Then you didn't have to do all the shit with the metagel and fucking spin <laughs> all, the, all that decoding of shit X, Y, B. It, it was like, oh, it's too much. But then when we got to Mass Effect 2, it was like, let your titties out like yeah. this is <laughs> yeah yo this is hippie hollow we're li- we're free hot now girl summer it's so. a hot girl summer <laughs> when you get to mass effect 2 and then mass effect 3 is uh y- you don't have to do the scanning on every planet anymore yeah oh man how much how many hours did i spend scanning fucking planets yeah. on mass effect 2 for resources oh now just certain planets i can oh this is beautiful i just go through i'm just trying to get resources the so i can fight these bitch ass reapers cool. you're like ooh, cool you can scan after the 15th planet you're like fucking i gotta do this shit i got yes i was yes. like vacuuming you gotta cover every piece of the it's like oh man i got every are you fucking aware planet? of undisputed the boxing game the undisputed it's the a new boxing game it's on steam right now hopefully it comes to consoles it looks real no. i've seen a bunch of footage of it on reddit and it looks really tight I have not seen this it's yet. It's, again, like Virtual Fighter with a really perfect collision detection. Yeah. People are online arguing about, you know, frame counts on the swings, on the jabs. Huh. I want to get into it. I loved Fight Night, and uh, I loved Ready to Rumble. What was your favorite Rumble. Fight Night? Uh, two? I think it was two. Two? I had a buddy that started coming over and whooping me real bad, so I quit playing because <laughs> I didn't like it anymore. Listen here. If you said two, then you didn't go all... Then you didn't... Three, no. three is most people's go-to. Yeah. Three... Uh, four took a step back, it felt like, and then Fight Night Champion was as close as we got to three, where we had Ali and Tyson. Yeah. Because you didn't have Tyson in three. Yeah. And I've, I've battled. Yeah. I've, I've had, I've almost lost friendships behind <laughs> Fight Night three. <laughs> Fight Night four, it was whatever. Yeah. But Fight Night Champion, that was the closest we got to three, where it was, but it, it felt more fluid. Okay. Um. And I and I caught a lot of hate because Evander Holyfield was my dude in when I played with my boys. Yeah, he was my guy in three, four, and then champion. I couldn't get my head around the physics of that game. I thought I was doing good, and then I would just get whooped and be like, "This doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand." So, oh, we were so cold blooded with yeah. it. I mean, because I didn't, I wasn't a button masher either. Like anybody can get on the sticks on that game, yeah. hit the buttons, and and That's be why competitive. I get into UFC and WWF because I feel like the system should be tighter now. With today's technology, where it's not so gummy. The advances that were made. Yeah. yeah. 2K23 is better than what they've been. Um, 22, 23 have been better. Uh, they needed that year off because they were, they, were, they were turning into hot shit in a yeah. fucking Dixie cup. Uh, they were not great. But it's, it's a little better now. But still, for me, like the UFC games are, are cool. I'll get on it for a minute. But when you, when you talk about like action, the, the best is still Fight Night, and use yeah. I, I'm a stick guy. I use the stick. I didn't use the buttons. Yeah. So and once they when they got the champion, you like didn't have to go like EA down and boxing. around yeah. anymore. It was just like you can just flip it down for an uppercut instead of down and swing up yeah. for an uppercut or for a hook. You had to go right and then up, and now it's just like flip it to the right, and it's like oh now I can really throw hands out here. Okay. Once they got to that point with it, like oh I was so nice. I still I can still <laughs> hold that left trigger, lean back. Dodge on that ass, on the, and then bap bap. I ruin your whole fucking life. Yeah, fucking yeah, flashing yeah, lights, counter punches. Videos. I'm a god <laughs> in in Fight Night. So Fight Night Three is the one I remember playing because that one came out in like early 2006, right? Yep, yep. And that was when I was living in a house with two other dudes, and all we did was we all worked at a call center, and then we came home and we smoked weed and we played PlayStation Three, which one of us had waited in line for and paid the six hundred dollars yeah. that the PlayStation Three cost when it came out. And we just played Fight Night and Burnout Revenge were like the two games that mm-hmm. we played over and over and over. That was like the 
whole year of 2006. Well, the trailer for Fight Night well, it had like the sweat shadow. Yeah, the sweat. And, and then, the f- gloopy face physics of getting punched. Yeah. You can see their cheeks going. Ooh. Yeah. And, and, then, the and then between the rounds, when you, when you go, you had to like put yeah. the stuff on, on the three. eye. On three, and you, and had the, the, you had to do the thing the, back and forth. You had to you stick the, the, the cotton oh, swab so up the great. nose was, and all that. You had to choose whether you going to work on the swelling or the cuts. Right, right, right. And then, the and then of course, your trainer was like, Mickey, he's like, all right, you got to you gotta get out from out there, you know. I love that. I love because that was part of the game. That was what made three so good was like you had to like you had to do that because if if you might you might be able to fight a little bit. But if you can't recover your boxer, that's right. Yeah, you'd be fucked up and you could last an extra round or two just by having a good cut game in the corner. Yeah, fucking work that shit out. Get that swollen down. Get this bleeding down. Yeah, I'm patched back up. I'm out here fucking you up again. Yeah, if you couldn't patch up, you was fucked up real quick. Third (laughs) round. That's the end of the goddamn game for you. There's a whole new dimension to the round, right? Oh, it was great. Yeah. That Creator Clash channel on YouTube is getting so big now. Maybe they'll make Fight Night Five with Sam Hyde and Logan Paul. <laughs> We've got Logan no Paul much. on WWE 2K23. Okay. We don't need Logan Paul in boxing. The lines are getting blurred with comedy now, where you have to. Everybody has to be a content guy and has yeah. to have a YouTube, and now we have to go box. Yeah, and we have to be naked. Well, that's what Elon <laughs> Musk and, <laughs> and, and, and yeah, we got Elon Zuckerberg Musk and Mark Zuckerberg are <laughs> seriously talking about doing a cage match or something. Uh, fighting in the octagon at least and, and Dana White's Dana like White's I'll like, yeah, do it's it real. Yeah. Man. I've already had five concussions I don't think I can do another one I'm not I'm not fully. paying to watch two billionaires yeah. fight so that they can get more <laughs> money off of a fucking fight that we're gonna pay to watch no yeah. thank you if yeah. one of them dies though then they, then we all win <laughs> or, or I mean, let's do this old school. We don't need to have a cage fight. What we need is both of them to show up on Sixth Street, get yeah. them drunk, get one of them at Shakespeare's, yeah. one of them on the East. You know what I'm saying? And then have them meet in the middle of Sixth Street to be like, "Yo, Mark, there he go right there, yeah, right in front <laughs> of ain't that, the, ain't that him right there with Rogan? Right in front of the mothership. Ain't yeah. that him right there with Rogan? The, the bouncers out to ref. I heard he said that him and Rogan's gonna stomp <laughs> you out, Zuck. You better go get his ass. And uh, he said your mama sucked dick for free. And then that Zuckerberg run over there and. <laughs> One more Mendoza. Then they fight. Like, <laughs> yes. you remember you used to push them? <laughs> two pumps. Yeah. like, get in there and get them. And they yeah. start, I don't want to. Then they start fighting. Yeah, it's crowd. great. Fight. Well, it fight. ends, it fight. ends when one of, their, one of them has a friend from Colleen to go, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody shows up with a knife on 6th Street all the time. The loser of that fight should have to go down in the tube to see the Titanic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the death trap. It's another death trap. Did you did your kids ever get into b- unboxing YouTube videos? You oh nah, man, I let my kids see none of that shit. <laughs> okay, my <laughs> kid, look, I'm from the '80s, and I my kids live like we in the '80s, but fancy '80s. Okay, like they don't get to see none of that shit. They don't know the 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 depth of their YouTube experience is um, sight words. Yeah, little brain breaks. Oh, that's good. And uh, uh, some sight words and some brain breaks, and then random animal shit that I want to show them. Yeah, like our they, house and, went, and music videos. Our house was full of chaos during COVID. We, we were like, just whatever. Just chill out, everybody. Just do whatever you want. Just let everybody calm down. I got real annoyed during COVID because you, you want to tell your kids everything's going to be okay. And I couldn't honestly tell my kids everything's going to be okay because nobody had any fucking idea what was going on. So, yeah, they everybody had their own screens and devices. And it was like, just whatever it takes to self-soothe. We let them... But they wanted to get into, they were watching all these unboxing videos, Mm -hmm. and they were like, can we do some? And I was like, you guys open everything in the car before we get home. How are we going to unbox it? All the plastic is in the back of the truck. We can't unbox anything. But I thought it would be, I don't know, maybe they'll have the patience to do it now. They can bring the whole box home and do their own thing. There's cardinals out there. You would like to hope so. Uh, I tried to get them into hiking more during COVID, because we got Longview right there. Mm Mm-hmm. And doing like bushcraft stuff and making fires, and th- you could hike for hours and not see anybody out there. Really? During March 2020, during COVID, I stood. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. During COVID, yeah, absolutely. You I could. stood on Westgate for 30 minutes in the middle of the road, and nothing happened. Nobody came up or down that road. I believe it. It was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> my kids were too young at that time. So like, uh, 2020, uh, Kennedy was two. Yeah. Zoe was four. Going, he was like, you know, he was. So Ashley still had to go to work at the daycare and stuff. Yeah. She was the director of the daycare, so they still went to daycare every day. Yeah. So like nothing changed for them. Yeah. Their life was completely unimpeded by COVID. Uh, now my life, on the other hand, different story. Yeah. Right. But but their life as they knew it, it, everything was normal. I had to telework and be the principal. I had to make sure every, all the kids were on their laptops doing their school, and we had all that craziness across the street mm-hmm. keeping us up all night. There's ambulances and fire trucks, and it was a nightmare. 
We're like, it's COVID. We got homeschool in the morning. Shut up. I was yelling at the cops to shut up. I came out front. Usually you don't come out front when the police are there. I was like, this is the third night in a row. Can we stop this ridiculousness out here? But Josh's house got hit by lightning yeah. a month into COVID. Your house got hit by lightning? because there's a bird on the peak. Yeah. And he got fried. So we found a fried crow in the yard or a crackle or whatever. And it killed my PS4, my garage opener. My TV, and we got a bunch of black outlets upstairs that are all fried, that don't work. Still. Over a bird? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the bird conducted or made the house a little taller or something. I have no idea. Huh. I mean, none of the other houses got hit but ours. I ain't never got hit by no lightning. Yeah, it was like, it was like a month in. And yeah. then uh, uh, you said uh, fire department guys were all like just yeah. bursting into your house. You're like, oh, germs. Like <laughs> yeah. was, We didn't know right yeah. then. That was like right, a month right. in, right? You know, so... Yeah, five huge dudes came tromping through the house yeah. in their tactical pants. Then they had to go up in the attic and see if anything was still burning. We had a roof guy come look at the damage and everything. We got some insurance money. It was okay. It was, you know, that and not having to pay electricity. Everybody loved doing like crazy. All we did was wait for Amazon to come. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Mama Bear gets ill during this kind of unquestionable things. So nobody was going anywhere or doing anything, right? Unless it, it, we anything that we could get delivered, we got delivered. So we were just stuck in the house, wondering if some cool stuff was going to come in the mail, because we didn't have to pay electricity for a couple of years, and now we're getting fucked by that, because we had to pay it all back. You had to pay it back. We're paying it back still. Wait, so why did why did you not have to pay for electricity? You did like some type they of like deferment, right? Everybody a hardship break. So my wife called and said we are not getting any overtime anymore from my husband's job so we need to not pay electricity for a while and i was like okay cool that should make things easier for everyone yeah now we can order weird gadgets on amazon and wait for them to get here and, play and then now them. they're saying all right now you gotta give us that money back yeah they had it all on paper they we still had to we still use electricity they still know <laughs> 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 so you've had the opportunity to be with your father and son at the same time huh? that's a rare thing for a, a lot of people you know lose their dads or don't get to be you know have the relationship i had that recently and it was really you know coming up right after father's day it was really deep and nice to be like in the center of the generations of having my dad there and my son there Mm -hmm. you know it's awesome but also you can see like the compulsions moving through the generations and go okay he's he's (laughs) fucked up and i'm fucked up yeah yeah, generational trauma is now you know you're gonna be (laughs) fucked up too yeah (laughs) It's like an ep- it's like a episode of Succession, just like wind up there right in front of yeah. you. It's all the all the generational trauma. Well, I went in the garage and got a but we've got gar- garbage bags, huge garbage bags full of stuffed animals in the garage, and now my kids don't even want material stuff anymore. They just want digital everything. You know, mm-hmm. the girls, thirteen year old girls got a phone. The boys and they got his Xbox. They're asking for stuff, and I'm like, sell some of those stuffies in the garage. A lot of it is like clearance stuff from GameStop back in the day, and it's worth more now. Like oh, nice. Pokemons and stuff. Okay. So, you know, they didn't know what it was back then. So if I was ever at GameStop grabbing a game back in the day and there's something for five bucks on clearance, I get it and bring it home. They go, wow, because they're four. So I've started putting that stuff on eBay, and it's selling for like 30 bucks now. Oh, wow. But it's a whole other job. So I'm trying to make them do it, but I have to like set it up. And show them and go, look, this sold. We have to go ship it. Come with me. And it's like trying to get them to take the initiative and do anything. <laughs> yeah, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> no. That's not, not not when dad can still do it. I told him, what percentage do you think you should get and what percentage do you think I should get if I sell one of your $4 toys for 30 bucks? And Walter was like, I get all of it. And I was like, all right, well, how's, he, how's it going to get shipped? Who put the photo online? He was like, I was like, can I get 10%? And he was like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I was like, I'm taking all of it anyway. It goes in my bank account. Right. <laughs> You'll get what I <laughs> get. Yeah. Oh, look, it sold for $7. He ain't got to know about the other 23. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're not I, doing really well on eBay. I had the opposite. When I was uh, when I was a kid, My uh, I used to go every summer to uh, go to my granny's house in Georgia. And then my uncles would come down from Detroit, and they would take me back to Detroit. And I used to sit in my uncle james's basement and he's old like he was a bootleg dude yeah he was a manager at ford at the plant and he would sell bootleg tapes this is 
cassette tapes back in yeah the, swap meet stuff yeah so he would sell bootleg tapes he's the bootleg guy at work so people would buy bootlegs off nice. of him for 10 bucks yeah so what i did during the summers i sat in the basement when i had four tv set up with the vcrs and I would record. I would make the copies yeah. of the bootlegs. That, that was my job. Yeah. So he'd go to work. He'd come back. I'd have stacks of tapes ready for him to take the next day. Nice. And then I got 10% of that. So for every tape he got that he sold, I got a dollar. So okay. I'm, I'm making, you know, 30, 40 tapes a day. And he's just – and he didn't have – like, my cousins wasn't doing that shit. Yeah. Like, they would, you know, <laughs> maybe during the school year they'd help out or whatnot. But that was Uncle James doing that. And then when I come for the summer, he's like – Child labor, let's go. <laughs> you know, and I'm like nine years old, just back, you know, Tango and Cash, fucking making copies of Tango and Cash all day long. I'm That's watching awesome. all these movies. That's uh, awesome. Then we would go down to, you know, down Seven Mile to right outside the Family Dollar where the Africans would be set up selling shit out of their goddamn van. And he let me start picking out the the, the movies and shit. We would yeah. get this one and this one and this one. Then I'd take those tapes back to the house and make copies of them. So the fact that your kids want a hundred percent on some shit that they did not, my uncle would be like, uh, if, and he's like, anything you do in this house, you need to, you know, you name a price yeah. and get paid for it. So I'd be ironing clothes. My uncle's like, can you iron my shirt? Yeah, I got you. How much? Give me uh, I'm nine. I need five quarters. Yeah. <laughs> How he, many blow pops can I get with? Yeah, it's like I'm yeah. thinking we're going to. He's gonna take me to the arcade and yeah. shit. So I'm yeah, thinking right. in arcade since I like I need six quarters. Yeah. And then I get there with six quarters and I'm like, man, I can't play but two games. Yeah. And then the so Korean then, kid puts a quarter on the screen on Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and you don't even ever get to play a game. Yeah. You know, and then uh, so then he's like, oh, you're making breakfast. Uh, let me get some eggs and some toast and whatever. Okay, cool. How much for that? Uh, <laughs> ten quarters. I need ten quarters nice. for this. It's terrible. Your entire life, like the, the your currency of your life is quarters. Whenever you're nine years old. Yes, absolutely. It's like, how many games yet. can I play right. with these quarters? I need to. I need ten quarters. All the weirdest toys that are left. I've been picking through the garage and all these old things, and I found some strange stuff that they don't even care. I mean, it's the stuff has been in the garage for five years, so it's worth nothing to anyone. Right. So anything I make on it on eBay is fine. But like the funky stuff, like the Funkos or those action figures that I still like, like I've got a Breath of the Wild Link, that shit all goes to work and goes in my cubicle. So I've got like a museum of strange leftover toys, GameStop stuff that I don't yeah. feel like selling because I still like it. It's the Isle of Misfit Toys <laughs> on your desk. <laughs> it's Sid's room from Toy Story. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, uh, our streak of championships has ended. As of last week, and we didn't get any good Star Wars memorabilia. Yeah, you didn't come. I invited you. You didn't come to Star Wars trivia. We've been going all May. What day was it? Uh, Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. Yeah. It was horrible. Uh, it was at the Pine House Brewery. The Wednesday on? that I was at Buzz Mill. Probably. See, that's why I didn't. Yeah. See, you tried to make it sound like I just, I ain't come. <laughs> I, was, I didn't know I was how out to there. contact you. Until. I was out there <laughs> doing things. I'm yeah. out here grinding in these streets. Mm. And we're sitting here going, it was Admiral Motti. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the prizes sucked at Pine House. So we started yeah. doing it at Waterloo because we went there for the open mic. And then we saw that they had Star Wars trivia coming. And we won that first place. And it was like Christmas. They had a whole pile of crap. He got yeah. that clue. Yeah, Star Wars clue. We and then he got a Chewbacca Funko Pop. Yeah. There was lightsabers. There was cards. There was all kinds of stuff. Yeah, so we're like, let's do it again. We're obviously the only people taking They got that lay of flashlight out yet? Yeah. The yeah. tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, the that's the return of the Jedi for you right there. You get that lay of flashlight. <laughs> that maybe, yeah, maybe they'd have that at Candy's if they do it there. Yeah. But then we went to Dave & Buster's, and the prize sucked. They just gave us $25 gift cards. Yeah, $25 gift cards. But then we went to Pint House and we came in second. It was my fault. I we missed we mi I missed an answer that I should have gotten, and uh, it was we were second place and we got a fifteen one fifteen dollar gift card to Pint House, and then the winners got a twenty five a single twenty five dollar for the whole table so. for, for the whole people. table yeah for, all, for the whole team. So, so we're not going to go to yeah. <laughs> So we're not going to go to any ones anymore where they pay you in currency from the establishment that you're at because that's just like you know. Comics complain about working at a casino and they pay your chips. It's like stick around, yeah, spend more money. No, but thank Waterloo you. was the best, but then they don't have Star Wars all the time. The next week they had uh, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, whatever Adam Sandler, Adam movies Sandler movie. movies. Which Speaking of which, that was my first comedy CD. Was getting those Adam Sandler. They're all gonna laugh at you. Yeah. And what the hell happened to me? I mean, yeah. we were all about the, those the, the shit with the goat, the yeah. goat thing. Yeah, the uh, goat. And Kevin Neal, yeah. the farting therapist was the yeah. best track on there. The uh, the idiot is like, I bet you got really hairy balls, <laughs> you know. 
So all my new, uh, yeah, material I've been trying to write recently is a lot of marriage stuff, and it's starting to sound too Rodney Dangerfield-esque. Hmm. So I'm trying to figure out a funny thing to call it when your wife yells at your kids through your face. Have you ever been in the room, and your wife is on one side of you, and your kids are on the other, and she decides to yell at them? Yes. And you're just in the way, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have to, you know, the moment is tense, and it's not a good time to go, hey, shut the fuck up. No, no, no. When, when it happens, I just kind of, I feel myself doing this lean right yeah. here, where it's just like, mm -mm, I like, get up and uh, go somewhere else, but at first I'm like, why do I got to get up? Sorry I'm in your way. I, I know you think my head is empty, but <laughs> you don't have to yell through each yeah. ear and out the other one. Do yeah. I look like a window? Don't yell through me. Yeah, maybe, right. maybe it's not that important to yell at them about that right now if there's someone sitting here in the room also. It's a lot of uh, performative, you know. The yelling went directly into one of your eardrums <laughs> yeah. and out the other eardrum to the child. Yeah, if I could have not heard, that would have been good. But we had the kids coming in the room all the time when I was telecommuting during COVID about everything. Just they're bored. Mm -hmm. So I had to tell them, if it's not fire or blood, it's not an emergency. Right. People come knocking. I'm in the middle of doing work. And I'm like, who's bleeding? What's on fire? I can't help you. But then the lightning hit the house and it was actually a real... Emergency. A real like, fire. Okay, fire, blood, or lightning, <laughs> then that's an emergency. Because <laughs> it killed the devices they couldn't, you know. I think those are Final Fantasy elements. Yeah. <laughs> no shit. Destroyed. Right? All right, we're going to take a break here, real right. quick, just for a second, and be right back. And we're back with Aaron Cheatham. Hello. Hey, so uh, uh, you were saying that, uh, you know, you're one of your first guys was Damon Wayans. So I assume you watched a lot of In Living Color. I did. Yeah, that was that was my sketch show uh, from about the ages of eleven to fifteen or so. Mm -hmm. We watched those. Good. Well, for us, it was, you know, Jim Carrey. For like me and my brother, like we were obsessed with Jim Carrey. And uh, but Damon Wayans and Jamie Fox on that. That was like your first. That was the first like exposure to those guys and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, uh, I was a huge fan of In Living Color. I got to work with Tommy Davidson last year. That's awesome. And that was like. That was surreal. It was like this fucking, yeah. like, you know, sitting in the green room with him. And it's just yeah. like, that's fucking Tommy Davidson yeah. right there. This that's is the, the guy that I watched on my CRT TV screen when I was, you know, 12 years old. Yeah, like, with yeah. Jamie Foxx being security, not, right. letting, not letting Tupac into the show and yeah. shit. Like, that's, like it, was, it was sick to be there and, like, and, like, to hear him talk about, like, like, he would talk about Jim Carrey, like, just, like, so freely. Cause, and it's like. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I was, you know, on the phone with Jim recently and da da da, da And it's like, you have to put together Jim. <laughs> oh, Jim Carrey. Jim. He's talking about Jim. <laughs> oh, that Jim. It's like people talk about Robert De Niro and they just say Bob or yeah. Bobby. And it's like, stop. That's Robert De Niro. Right. Everybody. And he's just like, Jim, you know, yeah. Jim's going to be in town and we're going to be doing this thing here. And I'm just like, wait, you and Jim Carrey are doing something? Yeah. It's like, eh, you know, and then Jim and then we're on the phone. But it's like, yeah, that's gonna, fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, you know, like the, the, that. He still like has like a pride, a, a huge amount of pride about in living color, and he and so whenever yeah. we like that topic even came up, just hearing yeah. him talk about those days, it was just like I was nine again, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was I was yeah. a kid again, fucking. So that's a in, mountaintop moment. You've been having some of them over the last year. You did tour. You got a special. Yeah, I've had a I've had a few. I mean, what in, what were stuff that you were looking forward to and thinking, you know, once I get this, once I do this, then I kind of feel like it's legit or I made it or you know. Man, the come the, up, the, the come up. <laughs> that's my show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> still, is that still happening? We're gonna bring it back. Okay, good. We're bringing it back, but uh, we we put a pause on the come up so that I can get ready to rec to record the special. And the Creek is so supportive. You know, oh, they're so cool. Oh no, the Creek is that's my home, man. Like yeah. Rebecca and everybody there, like they they take good care of me at the Creek. They're very they're yeah. very good to me. And uh. So, but outside of Tommy Davidson, what was your big other mountaintop moments you had recently where you're like, this is legit now? Oh, shit. Dude, working with Hannibal Burris? Hell yeah. Like, oh, on the low, great. like that, like just even being a, in, I played a small part of the conversation yeah. that evening to get him on stage. Mm -hmm. But even playing a part in that and like, like that was like, yo, I am talking to Hannibal Burris right now yeah. and I'm like so you gonna do the show or <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like I was, I'm, I'm not trying to I know they I know they putting the pressure on you I'm not yeah. trying to pressure you Hannibal yeah you know I don't, I don't want to be the one that makes you go I ain't doing this shit yeah. but I was like you gonna do it though I just, I just need to know yeah so that I could try to get these motherfuckers off the stage yeah for like logistic reasons so that you right? could yeah. so, and yeah. then it was like 
And then like Rebecca comes back over and I was like, I'm gonna let her do her thing and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go chill. Yeah. Um that was dope. Listen, um going to see Louis, yeah, watching Louis C. K. Yeah. Watching Louis C. K. and sitting next to Ron White. Mm-hmm. Like Oh shit. Go fuck yourself. Like Where was this at? At the creek. Okay. Dog. Oh yeah, because oh, d- Louis up. dropped in when yeah. he did Rogan or whatever, and he he did two nights at the creek. He did yeah. a couple nights at the it creek, and it was like impo- like it was hard to get into. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. it was it was yeah. But I got a, I got a seat that's saved for me, yeah. and uh, I I went in and I went to my little spot, and then a bunch of like uh, open micers came in and sat around and no, actually it wasn't it, not at that point. Some other people came and sat down. And they brought Ron, Ron over, and they were going to come sit him over there where and I was he's at. cackling in one of your ears at Louis' shit uh, with well, his signature. <laughs> dog, so it was it was so sick. So the uh, he comes in over, and they and there was a bunch of people sitting around, and so they take he walks right back out of there's nowhere for me to sit. Yeah, and I was like, oh y'all got to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you know, and I was like, I'll move too. Fuck it, like let's give Ron White some space. Come over here. Yeah. So I get everybody to move, go find somewhere else to sit. I move over, and I. Uh, take a seat right next to where I was sitting so that he can have space to come through. Didn't have to feel like people were on him. Yeah. And then a bunch of like open mic comments come in, see that space open yeah. and sit down right after yeah. they go to get Ron to come back. <laughs> and I go, y'all got to get the fuck up. Yeah. We're <laughs> Ron, Ron right like y'all, that y'all can't sit there right now. Ron's coming yeah. back. Y'all got to get the fuck up. And he comes and as they see him coming, they get up and they fucking move over. And, uh, and he, he took my seat and there's like a seat in between us. And just like, like I, I didn't even talk to him. Like I've, I've spoken to him before, but yeah. I didn't even at that moment we were in a show, so I'm not gonna fucking yeah, be. Right. Yeah. But it's just like, motherfucker, like Ron White is right here. <laughs> Tater <laughs> salad himself. Louis is right there, yeah. and it's yeah. like it was cool to like because I'm already watching Louis. And, and you were and, in Aaron. Che- he Ron White was in Aaron Cheatham's seat. He was sitting yeah. in my seat. <laughs> yeah. He was sitting. It has my name on the back. Nice. Uh, and yeah, it was cool to be watching a legend. With a legend, yeah. <laughs> and si- and out my side eye watching a legend yeah. watch a yeah, legend. Right, right, the right. way that I, I was like, "How's he watching this?" I know how I know that's just hitting me, but I'm like, "What's he? What's, what's Ron yeah. White doing with this?" <laughs> nah, like it's there's been a lot of in the last eighteen months, like shit that was like, "Am I doing? Am I? Am I actually getting there?" Yeah, you know, um, there's been a bunch of them, man. And what and, even does it mean anymore? With you know, it's not. Yeah. Doing Dick Cavett or getting Mitzi past you at the store and going on Carson and getting a sitcom like it used to be. There's not that track now. It's a million different directions. You got to go on Creator Clash and box somebody. You got to do Roast Battle Naked in New York in front of a bunch of, you know, there's you play video at, games and <laughs> have reaction videos. Yeah. Or, or at Skank Fest, you can get naked. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if you wanted to talk about all that. You saw some. <laughs> we don't need to talk you about. Saw something you don't want to. We don't, see. We don't need to. We don't need to talk about that. <laughs> okay. it, it, it is best. That's a later. It is best. That's a. That is a. Uh, a, a not aired so conversation I, right there. That's. I was listening to your show you did about what airport woes, airplane airline woes with mm-hmm. back. Yeah. And uh, I had one recently. I went to pick up my family. They all came into town for a reunion thing. And I'm watching the flight, you know, on the phone, the mm-hmm. tracker. And it said it landed. And I'm in the airport. They asked me to park and help them with bags. They got a newborn. The mom's got a busted foot. So I'm a, I knew, like, it showed on the tracker which bag claim they're going to be at. So I'm there. I'm texting them. It shows that they landed. And then, you know, on the fl- airline, this is fu- Southwest. Fuck Southwest. But it said they had arrived. And then all of a sudden it changed and updated and said they were 20 minutes out. So they lied fine whatever oh my god corporations are liars but uh during that while i'm waiting this group of women walk by look like they'd all just got back together from not seeing each other for a while they're like oh my god we should take a picture and one of them looked over at me sitting on my phone and said let's ask this gentleman here to take a picture and then two of the other girls looked and said no and i was like fuck yeah that's exactly the look i'm going for (laughs) the guy that you don't ask to get up and do shit (laughs) <laughs> at the airport when he's on his phone. I had a I had a similar experience. You talk about you know big moments late recently in January. I was uh I was in Dallas doing uh doing a run with Willie Barsena. And you know Willie's old school K Locos uh and so it was dope for me to be able to do this do this 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 son. It was six shows we did. And uh the last show it's the very last fucking show. We are uh, 
about to start the show. I'm outside at the bar. I'm hosting. Mm-hmm. I'm grabbing a drink from the bar. And as I'm grabbing a drink, there's a group of people that are like by the bar and they're trying to get a picture. So one of them comes up to me and is like, hey, can you take a picture of us? And I'm literally getting ready to go walk on stage to start yeah. the show. <laughs> and can you take a picture of us? And I literally say, do I look like a fucking photographer to yeah. you? What are you doing, lady? Should have got in it and be like, I know y'all want a picture with me, right? And well, they start <laughs> laughing and they're like, oh, you're funny. Da, da, da. And, and they're just cat and, and they hand me the phone and then they go and they go over to this little photo op little thing where yeah. they got like flowers and shit. And they're all like, it's like prom pictures and shit. This is like some uh, Orrin Wells or yeah. the, not Orson Wells, the fucking uh, Olin Mills. Yeah. Olin Mills picture. That's <laughs> completely different. Right. Yeah, the, that, not the Citizen Kane pictures. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the, the teased hair pictures. Yes. Yeah. They, Animal I mean, Farm. They're, right. they, they line up and they take all these fucking, I'm taking group pictures and shit. And uh, then I give them the phone. They're like, ah, oh, thank you. And they're all very happy. And I'm like, these motherfuckers. And then they walk in and uh, I get my drink. I walk in behind them and. They seat them, and they are the entire front row. Okay. The entire front row is this group of people that just made me take their picture. And then you went up. And then they start the show, and I walk up. And <laughs> the first thing I say to the audience is, well, you look at who's in the front row tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell the audience the story about how these motherfuckers. Should have been like, give me your phone again. We're going to take a selfie with me in the microphone with y'all in the front row behind right? me uh, as one- the background. I, after I roasted them. I roast them. I bring up the first comic. I come back up, and the guy, one of the guys is like, uh, "You roasted them. You made them get naked. You punched them. Uh, all the good creative content." Says, this guy says, "Wait, before, can I just say something to the rest of the audience?" Oh my god! And I go, "You want to do it?" I just want to explain to them. And he turns around. I go, "Yeah, go ahead." He goes, yeah. "All right, guys." And I go, "Nobody fucking cares. Yeah. Shut the fuck up." <laughs> and he and he's just like, oh, and everybody dies and it's like <laughs> you, you already them. you already fucked up bitch you already fucked up as soon as you handed me your phone and said take a picture you fucked up <laughs> be careful who you ask to take your goddamn picture because you might just get more than a picture back so was that here in town or was that, that was in dallas so you f- just went on a midwest tour mm-hmm. i went i went to uh, utah in september i never thought i'd go to utah in my life mm-hmm. you know you l- memorize all the states and shit when you're little and you're like there's no way I'm ever going to Nebraska. That's uh, I did. Well, yeah. So, <laughs> you went to Don't all Don't talk to a touring to comedian about places you wouldn't go. Yeah, I was just there. I was Yeah. I was in Nebraska. Actually, Nebraska I I was talking shit. Yeah. And ended up at the end of that night I was like I kind of fuck with Nebraska. Yeah, like, okay. I kind of fuck with Nebraska. Now there's some there's some cool cities in Nebraska. Well, Omaha and Lincoln are pretty awesome. I want nowhere near. Wait, where was I? Was in Alliance. I oh, was in yeah. Alliance, Nebraska. That ain't no Lincoln or Omaha. No, that's that a is one, right? Alliance. Apparently, um, they hit me to some game that I was that down here we don't know that like apparently Deadwood not only is a real place. Yeah, but it's yeah, still popping. Right? Yeah. No, uh, South, Dakota. Dakota. Oh, South Dakota. South yeah. Dakota. Right, right, right. It's still popping. It's like the place to be like really? out there that's the big city to them so you wow. could be the Chappelle of nebraska everybody's I, like Chappelle, iowa where is he at idaho what the fuck yeah, yeah. why I'm, but no that would that would require me to be in nebraska yeah. more than <laughs> look that night that night nebraska that went was hard. one that was one good nebraska that night. was one good nebraska night that was one epic nebraska night all right that was yeah. a, but night epic. two three four <laughs> night 17 in nebraska is probably not yeah. that great of a night yeah right? probably not right yeah yeah, yeah. like i i've think you'd get kind of done with nebraska pretty quick it's like (laughs) all right i've done this shit i'm out you know austin's kind of getting fucked up and the prices are crazy and people are talking everybody's talking about not high enough to go to nebraska no yeah (laughs) everybody's talking about going somewhere else my wife keeps finalizing the houses on instagram and she follows all these cheap you know let's go refurbish this place in alaska and live off the grid and all this and I'm like, how can you? There's nothing online where you can check the meth percentage of these towns. <laughs> right, like, dude. It I, looks nice, the scenery, but you get there and. Mm, mm, mm. I, I, so I, out here we don't see meth heads like that. No, we see potheads, we see coke heads. Yeah, we know what those look like. We don't see meth heads in the wild no. in Austin. I did in North Dakota, yeah. and I wasn't yeah. sure what the fuck that was. And and the guy that's driving us around he goes, "Oh, that's meth." And I was like, "Oh, this motherfucker." Uh, this there was a dude walks across the street. Like, keep in mind, it's April, so snow yeah. is, like, high as fuck. Like, yeah. snow is, like, mid-thigh. Mm-hmm. There's snow piles taller than me. We're at a red light downtown Bismarck, and this guy walks across the street in front of the car. He's wearing camo pants, a wife beater, mm-hmm. and nothing else. Like, this dude didn't even have shoes on. Yeah. All right. And it's snow everywhere. And he's just walking across the street, and he starts geeking yeah. in front of the car. And it was like, 
<laughs> Dude, what the fuck is that? <laughs> My whole boy's like, that's meth. <laughs> uh, yeah. And he gets on the corner, and, like, I didn't know if he was, like, slipping because ice on the corner and he no. ain't got shoes on or what, but he's like, no, that's just a geek that's out. He's reality just, he was just for him. Eh, eh, eh. He was just getting it. <laughs> he's Pee Wee Herman. He was, and I was like, bitch, I know a dance-off when I see one. Like, <laughs> dun, 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 like don't make me get out this car. We'll fucking thriller dance this shit out tonight. Like, you know, like... But it was like, I had never seen that shit. It was like, just uh, just a dude on meth walking down the street, geeking out, losing his fucking mind. It was like, yeah. You could line up eight of them and be like, darkness falls across the land. Yeah, right. <laughs> Midnight hours, close the van. So that you know the whole Vincent Van Gogh <laughs> shit. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Creatures crawl in search of blood. Oh. <laughs> right. So right. you are from Detroit? I mean, no. you got your Detroit hat on. So I'm, I'm the first one in my family that on my mom's side of the family that wasn't born in Detroit. Okay. Everybody else was, like, born in Detroit. So I was raised by people that are straight Detroit. I spent summers damn near every year in Detroit, went up there in high school so that I can get uh, – I got my very first job in Detroit, learned how to drive in Detroit um, because I was going to go to the University of Michigan. So mm-hmm. I wanted to get that uh, – I didn't want to pay the out-of-state tax and whatnot, so I went and stayed with my family up there so that I can get – residency and all that shit so that way we could try to play it off so i wouldn't have to pay that extra money but then i ended up not going to michigan um partially because i don't know if y'all have done a a, a michigan winner but fuck all that i have uh i have family in minnesota yeah and it's it's close enough more or less the same thing yeah Yeah. and when you're from the south yeah fuck all that so yeah uh summer 2017 i was in detroit mm-hmm. i drove uh we drove from pittsburgh through uh ohio cleveland into detroit because we were doing a baseball trip and i spent like a day and a half in detroit we went to a tigers game and all that it's an interesting city it's uh it's so big like yeah. it was such huge sprawl in the face like you were saying that like you you had family members who worked for ford right ford and Lincoln. i mean it, what it must have been in like in the fifties was insane. Like just the absolute giant sprawl of what that city was. Oh yeah. And I imagine in the sixties in, in Detroit, you know, with the Motown boom. Oh like, yeah. That was like, you know, the automotive boom, the Motown boom. There was so much culture. Mm-hmm. There still is so much culture in that town. Yep. Um speaking of the come up, they're coming back up now. You know, a couple of years ago you heard there was bears. In, like, the industrial area, living in the warehouses. Reclaimed what? by nature, like, yeah. Did, yeah, did the outskirts of Detroit were, f- I, I, were falling apart. I, I believe that. I mean, look, when I was there in 2018, yeah. 2018, 2019, maybe 2019, I don't know. Whatever year I did a bunch of festivals, yeah. I went to, I was in Detroit, and I was staying with my uncle, and my aunt's got, like, the news on and shit. Yeah. And I was like... After like three days in Detroit, I got depressed. Yeah, I, I, it was because all they talked about on the news, literally every day on the news, it was just somebody was murdered on yeah. the, the whatever block of Eight Mile. Somebody <laughs> was stabbed on this block. It was like, how was the entire news about people having just bad murder. fucking yeah. days? I guess yeah. Like the worst murder. day ever is the entire news, and it was like, man. And then I started driving around the city, and I'm seeing like piles of shit. Yeah, like th- like they they came through and they renovated downtown. Right, yeah, downtown looks nice. Like I went downtown, and I saw like white people walking around with headphones on. I was like, <laughs> never in my day. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> ne- That's there's not like the Detroit I remember. Yeah, yeah. and there's yeah. like people were like, there's a bar in the park. Yeah, and all yeah. I was like, this shit is insane. And then you leave that area that they fucking yeah. renovated. Yeah, and it's like the rest of town is just piles of trash and yeah. shit on the street. There's grime and. Huge ass potholes and When's shit. When's the last time you were there? Uh, 2019, I believe it was. Yeah, See, I, I was... they took advantage of the bubble, the re- the housing shit, and there was a lot of cheap real estate, and it started to fill back up with maybe it was and hipsters. hipsters and... When I was yeah. there, yeah. when I was there, I legit could have bought a house in Detroit with money I had on me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like because because my, my quarters from back in the day, and, and they what, were they were all the quarters my uncle gave me. <laughs> They're worth a lot now. Like my wife was like, you know, hey, I've never been there, and you know, your whole family's from there. Maybe we should look at, you know, Detroit. And she's looking online at Zoom, Zillow and all that shit, and she's like, oh, there's a lot of cheap shit. I'm like, yeah, my nigga, I see. There's some shit that's cost a thousand dollars. Do you really Whoa. want a thousand dollar Detroit house? Yeah, what basically they're the whole point of that is so that you have to pay taxes on that property. Land, that's like well, that's why it's so crazy there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that and and you also have to kick the crackheads out yeah, well, of the house. Yeah, yeah the squatters. And then, and... Yeah, and then clean. Like it's they're all total fixer uppers. And it's like, yeah, you can buy a house in Detroit for a thousand dollars in twenty nineteen, 
but do you really want a house in Detroit for a thousand dollars? Yeah. No, thank you. I'm good. I'll, I'll take a fifty thousand dollar house in Detroit. Yeah. Location, <laughs> location, real quick. Location. Lo- yeah, that that was not right. the location. Trust. But yeah, me and Josh probably have this. Where I, actually, when I was in Detroit, I had this um, like sudden realization about like how sheltered my dad is yeah (laughs) because uh we were in we stayed in downtown detroit right and when we were in cleveland i was at a bar and some guy said hey you got to try this restaurant it's really cool it's great it's in detroit and here's the address here's the name of it so we take an uber from downtown detroit um across the highway basically to Mm -hmm. this little uh hipstery restaurant and we eat there and then i'm like the Uber drive was not that far. So let's just walk back to our hotel. But again, it was on the other side of the highway from downtown. Mm-hmm. So it would be like block of like restored building. Probably some hipsters had bought it and renovated and all this stuff. And then dilapidated crack house. And then nice, you know, restored building and then something else. And it was about the time we walked by a liquor store and my dad started getting scared. <laughs> <laughs> What's that like to be with your dad and, and, and feel so, that he's scared? So what it is is um, – you know, we're walking by this liquor store, and there's people milling about, people who are not white like us, right? Uh-huh. And there's guys walking at it with, like, you know, swaying back and forth with bottles in paper bags and all that. <laughs> I mean, that's My dad how goes, feel in Philadelphia, seeing all those people on the sidewalk. You know, right? And so my dad just kind of does this. Oh, we better get out of here. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, oh, hi, Bob. It's two o'clock in the afternoon in broad daylight. Nothing is happening to us as we're walking literally within sight of downtown. You were playing with your life. (laughs) You were playing with your life. Listen, on that same trip, when I'm leaving Detroit, I'm on my way out of town. And uh, I remember my uncle, when I was younger, used to take me down to Seven Mile. So we lived uh, in between Eight Mile and Seven Mile. Okay. Um, on the west side town, like I, I, my first job was at Tell Twelve Mall, which is a uh, Telegraph uh, Road and Twelve Mile. And that's like you know from my crib, just hop on Eight Mile, get on Telegram, shoot up north, you know up to Twelve Mile. That's where the mall was. Right. Um. So Seven Mile is just half a mile south of the house. And my uncle, when I was a kid, used to take me down there. We get all I could get all these badass clothes. They have great clothes shopping down there, right? So I'm like, I'm going to go hit up these shops real quick, pick up a couple of T-shirts on the way out of town. And then and my uncle's like, you going to Seven Mile by yourself? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And he goes, let me get the pistol. And I was like, I don't need the gun. He's like, yeah, you do. You need the gun. I go, Uncle James, it is one in the afternoon. I don't need right. a gun to go down to Seven Mile to go shopping for some clothes. And he's like, you get in some trouble, then you just call me. And I was like, <laughs> so I leave the house, stop by this pizza spot. There's supposed to be a boutique right across the street. So I order the pizza, walk across the street, and it's fucking locked. It's it's closed down. It's it's locked up. You know, like like, like uh, the chain the, the gates are down. The gates like, are down, yeah, yeah, all yeah. that type of shit. Like right. and I was like, All right, well this is shit. So then I go back, get my pizza and I look and I'm like, All right, there's another one a little bit down the road. Right. Shoot down the road a little bit, get out the car. That place is locked up. And I'm looking around and it's like a bunch of sketchy dudes walking around. I'm like but this is seven mile. I ain't scared. But like, I, I, all right, I'm now paying attention to, wait a second, this motherfucker, what are these people just walking around aimlessly and shit? No earbuds. And, uh, <laughs> no, no, no earbuds, earbuds. No earbuds, no earbuds at all. I go Nobody's down. walking around with Walkmans. <laughs> none of that. None of that. No, they've got actual boom boxes. Yeah. Right. Like, and, and I go down the road a little bit further to a third spot. And I'm like, if this place ain't open, then fuck it, I just ain't getting no gear right. while I'm here. Yeah. Go there, door's locked again. I was like, all right, fuck it. I turn around, as I walk into the car, I hear the door unlocked behind me, and the dude peeks his head out the door, and he's like, you trying to get in? <laughs> and I go, is y'all open? Like, this is this a... Is, just a shop like you the yard clothes and stuff. Open. We're only open if you got some money. It's and, like uh, when me and Josh went to Brick's Pub yeah. the other night. <laughs> they locked it. They locked this pub because there was a crazy guy out front. Yeah. Uh, well, this shit is like so. I'm like, yeah, I'm looking to get some clothes and stuff, man. Is, are y'all open? He's like, yeah, come on in real quick. And I was like, oh, this is sketchy. So I he mean, opens yeah, the door. But no, but yeah. He lets me in and he locks the door behind me, and he's like, yeah, man, we got all this stuff and there, you know, people in there, and he's like, it's open and it looks nice inside. Yeah. And I'm like, dope. And they got a bunch of fresh gear. And I'm looking around. They're yeah. showing me we got this stuff, we got that stuff, and all this. I'm like, dope. So I'm taking my time looking around. Somebody else came in, same thing, locked the door behind them. They get their stuff, they bounce. I pick out like four T-shirts and a hat uh, that I wanted, go to checkout, and, you know, 
they're like, oh, we ain't seen you around here. And I go, oh, man, I came up around here, told them, you know, my family right down the street and all that. And they're like, oh, man, I told them I was doing comedy. I was on my way to Ohio to go do the Whiskey Bear Festival. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're like, yo, you know, you got to come back around. But not. I showed them a clip and they saw some of my comedy. They're like, man, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it's good that we see you all coming back around. Yeah. All this good Hometown shit. Hometown hero done good. Yeah. yeah. So they're all happy and shit. And uh, they and as I'm getting ready to walk out, I pay and everything. And they go to the dude at the door. Hey, my man's leaving. Make sure he get out. All right. <laughs> and I was like, hey, security. What is what? And right. So I get to the door and the guys at the door, he goes, you done young blood? I was like, yep. And he goes, uh, where you parked? And I said, I'm right here on the corner in a, in a white Jeep. He's like, all right. Pulls his shirt up, puts his hand on his piece, <laughs> opens the door, peeks his head out the door. And he goes, all right, I'm going to watch you. Let's go. Yeah. And we walk out and and he's like, that's you right there? And I go, yep. And he's like, all right, cool. I got you, young blood. And I walk, and I'm like, is this motherfucker really giving me an armed escort <laughs> to my car at one o'clock in the morning, yeah. <laughs> or not in the morning, yeah, in the afternoon, yeah, one yeah. o'clock? Yeah, straight up. He watched till I got to my car. When I got in, he takes his hand off the gun and he's nice. like, "All right, man, you come back round, come down and yeah. see us again. You make a bounce. I'll come back see y'all, whatever." Yeah, and I was just representation like, now over there. What the fuck is going? Like, why are we? <laughs> Yeah, so yes, you were definitely in danger <laughs> at one at two in the afternoon. I guess, I, I guess I'm getting was, armed escorts. I guess it was my I guess it was just my uh liberal confidence. Yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> Nobody'll do anything yeah. to us right now. Yeah. We're just walking. <laughs> yeah, just like all the other The marks. world is not that bad of a place. <laughs> they used to tell it's us not. not to go behind the Capitol in DC when I was growing up. And I was like, the whole half of the city is behind the Capitol. We can't go to half of the whole capital of America. Don't and but that's where all the bootlegs were at. We had a guy from New York that would come down with bootlegs of Stretch of Bobito and Biggie and all the stuff. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm old. I'm 46. So whenever all that stuff was happening, the early 90s is a lot of people's legacy. You know, that's the greatest hip hop of all time. We were getting bootlegs in D.C. that that they didn't know about in New York. You know, you don't mm-hmm. get caught bringing that stuff down in the, in, the, in the trunk and everything. Right. And you know, they would warn us all the time, don't go behind the Capitol. And it was kind of like. Please don't throw me in the briar patch, kind of. You yeah. know, it's good that it, they're lying. All the best parties are over there. All everything's over there. You know, they're block parties, and you can go behind the Capitol. You, you can. Just, you need to know somebody, and you need to not just be strolling around with your dad. <laughs> <laughs> We're like- going to a baseball game later, <laughs> and we just ate in a restaurant that had really good salad. Let's walk back to our hotel in downtown Detroit. Got to walk off this mill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get my steps in. <laughs> so, so, you, so you 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 weren't born in Detroit. Are you nah. born in Texas? I was born in D.C. Born in D.C. Yeah, nice. my, my family is uh, military, so I was born in uh, in D.C. I, uh, specifically, Andrews Air Force Base. Right. Yeah. Uh, my mom was born in Bethesda. So okay. Yeah, yeah. Like I think my par- my parents. How much can I say? Um, my mom, my dad worked at bowling. My yeah. mom worked at the Pentagon. Okay. And but I was born at Andrews. I have okay. a similar. Yeah. Defense contractors. Right. I was in Fairfax. Okay. Know, right outside there, my whole life, two two to twenty six, and it was too much. You know, during the Bush administration, I was more of a hippie raver, and I was like, it's bad energy here. I don't like to feel that. You know, Thievery Corporation was DJing on the Capitol lawn during the the State of the Union with a big inflatable projector of Bush with devil horns. And, you know, we went to a protest and Peter, Paul and Mary played against the Gulf war. And I was like, none of this is doing anything. This is going to just keep happening. Yeah. And the only opportunities I had were like to work with that kind of stuff. And I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to make bombs or missiles. Right. I just want to make graphics (laughs) and jokes. I I left there. I think I was three when we left DC. I was born there left there at on my third birthday and we moved to the philippines and then we were there till like second grade and then we moved to mississippi you've been all over a little bit I died so it's a pretty bit. varied environments we oh, to grow up in. but we had wife and kids here so we're here you know yeah now we're here fathered in uh <laughs> i mean i've been in texas since 95 95 i moved to texas i came in 04 all right i was in san antonio went to you know eighth grade Finished up eighth grade, and then all of high school, and then, then I just been acting the ass in this state. Hell yeah! Ever <laughs> since then. So uh, you didn't go to Michigan. Where what what university did you go to? I went to Texas Wesleyan University. Wesleyan, up, okay, up nice. in uh, up in Fort Worth. 
All right, yeah. Uh, Texas A&M bought our law school. So now everybody brags about how great Texas A&M's law school is. No, that's the Wesleyan Law School. Y'all motherfuckers. Yeah. Just, they didn't have a good law school. They just bought a good law school. <laughs> we had a great law school. The rest of the campus, eh. But our law <laughs> school, yeah, that was that was, that was was legit. That's awesome. We've done a bunch of, uh, yeah, speaking of Star Wars trivia, Anthony Daniels, I think, is the only person that ever played 3PO. You know, there were different R two D two guys. Right. There are different Chewbacca's, Jabba the Hutts, yeah. different Darth Vaders, mm. different Air- Bubba Fett's yeah. been like eight different dudes. Yeah. They're but two, Anthony there's Daniels multiple is, Chewbacca's now that Peter's dead. I'm sure if you interview Anthony Daniels, he'd be very proud. I was the only one yeah. that ever was in. I mean, there was a CG, you know, with the gears. And yeah. Stuff. Right. But he's. I wonder if his arms get stuck like that after he's done making a movie. Cause if he just walks around the house like that, <laughs> his wife was like, "Can you stop?" I need help around the house. Uh, I would Anthony like to Daniels have intercourse with you tonight. <laughs> no, his, his husband is like, can you stop? How are you going to jerk me off with it? <laughs> Please bend over. It is time. <laughs> oh, my goodness so gracious me. So docking in three, <laughs> two, one. Use the force. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> so what was, your, what was your thing you grew up What was your franchise that you grew up with? Like, what was your number one, the, the, show, the, the movies you watched over and over and over the most? Movies, man. Um... Like I was a Star Wars kid. I mean, we're '80s kids, right? Like, right. I, I, I was a Star Wars guy growing up. Um, How did you feel about the prequels when they came? '99. I was hot. You were too old. I was, I was hot. '99. That's the year I graduated high school. I was hot. Okay. I was yeah. hot because I, I was hot was because big. I was expecting Samuel L. Jackson to be Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. You can't kill me, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we thought that he was gonna be such a badass, and instead yeah. he's like. A Sith Lord, yeah. like he's His so big he, baller he's so move stiff, was the purple you know? lightsaber, man. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, make that right. Crazy. Then they give him that baller ass lightsaber. Yeah. That's like his lightsaber had all the big dick energy yeah. in the world, right. but the rest of his fucking right. prequels, he had just been. Tell well, me more. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. At least he got to cut off Jango Fett's head. So in Episode Three, they activated all the clones, mm-hmm. Order Sixty Six, and mm-hmm. they turned on the Jedi. Mm-hmm. I feel like the Mexicans to do that to Texas if they if they had a communication system that could activate. I'm wondering if that's what that whistle is. <laughs> like there's well, they just there's that article the other day where this is a majority minority like it's more hispanics here than yep. anybody yeah. else i'm more and worried about spiders executing that because <laughs> at any moment spiders could off all of us yeah in uh, one calculated strike spiders could end us yeah like or what was it was it us that was talking about how like if like all the insects in the world decided just to get rid of all the humans yeah. it would be no it would be no uh, not even a problem. Yeah, they just like psh, they not even a bother. They're gone. Well, you explode. Russia thinks of the Ukraine as like a dumb baby country because mm-hmm. they're just less than a hundred years old, and they're like, quit playing around, come back home. You were at Russia for a thousand years before that. Right. Mexico could do that to Texas. You're being a dumb baby. It's been less than a hundred years. Come on back to mama. Listen here, Mexico. Mexico don't want these Mexicans. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, all, all this, they, they, they're, these Mexicans are yeah. too soft. So you don't think we Mexico. need to do land acknowledgments at, at Austin comedy clubs like they do in Canada for the oh, Inuits? Yeah, this is their land. We took it. I'm sorry. Uh, no, only I'll do it. I'll say it, but they're not gonna. Yeah, no, they're not. The actual Mexico Mexicans, they're not coming over here and say no. They. They prefer this arrangement as it is because oh, they, they're there. so much richer. It's a lot nicer down there than it is here. It, there's places in Mexico that are beautiful. And yeah, there's places in Mexico that you don't come back from. Oh, there's that too. <laughs> so Amy Hennig, we were talking about her on a previous show. Uh, the the uh, She's a... Right, uh, she, oh, she was a uh, Naughty Dog, right? Yeah. She was the Naughty Dog she's lady. She's been brought back to start back up again on Star Wars 1313. That when they were going to make an underworld game with mm-hmm. the lower levels of Coruscant a couple okay. of years ago, and then like during the Disney Star Wars acquisition thing that shook up all the Lucas Art stuff, and they and got they rid of everything. Yeah. That game, but everybody's looking forward to it. So you're going to be a bounty hunter in the lower levels of, of Coruscant. Coruscant. Yeah. Awesome. Oh no shit! But now they're bringing back this lady, Amy Hennig, who she's kind <laughs> of a big part of the reason that uh naughty dog became naughty dog she was she was like the, the the main brains behind the uncharted games and um the first last of us was more of a co-production between her and uh what's his name uh yeah. man bun mcgee yeah. um and uh then she kind of got forced out during uncharted 4 mm-hmm. and then you can kind of see the direction that naughty dog went after that like as far as the quality of like the stories that they're telling and things like but that where did she go after that but then she went and wrote on had some uh 
p- thing to do with Forspoken, that yeah. terrible freaking Square Enix game. Yeah. With the girl uh, from New York City yeah. who goes – it's an isekai. You know what an isekai is, right? Uh-uh. It's like one of those where, like, a person from Earth gets sent to another world and they have to, like, learn it. It's that well, that's, that's a Starfighter that's Japanese. It's like, it's like a it's like an anime manga kind of um, trope or whatever. Okay. So yeah, Forspoken was one of these. It was the people who made Final Fantasy fifteen. They wanted to keep using that engine. Everybody hated it, and it was bad. It was really bad. The bad dialogue. That's yeah. the one that I that I was fucking around with. Yeah. And I I, I got about twelve. Twelve, somewhere between twelve and thirty hours into the game, Forspoken, and, and no, no 15, and Final Fantasy right, fifteen. Final Fantasy 15. Yeah, we were I talking like, about Final Fantasy earlier. I got other shit to do. Yeah. Yeah. The new one is really, really good. It's no, back it's really to fun. the roots. It's medieval. It's not turn based, but it's got really interesting combos. And we, we, yeah, we did a whole show about it. But uh, I watched the new Sarah Silverman special. I don't know if you saw that. Was I up. started watching it and I fell asleep. Yeah. Nothing, not a knock on her. It's just I. Put it on late at I night, was, fell yeah. asleep, and I, I was just hoping didn't it finish. would be good. I always enjoy Jewish diarrhea humor. There's plenty of that, <laughs> so I like that. But this, you know, she does that thing that a lot of people do. You know, you probably see more of it open mics where people use the stage as therapy, mm-hmm. and it's like you should just get a therapist. This is not the place for you to talk about your family. You know, the same thing I was talking about earlier, but with wife, funny wife stuff. Like Dangerfield can pull it off, but I don't want to be up on stage just complaining and crying like a bitch about <laughs> relationships <laughs> right unless you can find something funny about it but the male female thing has been going on for so many thousands of years that that's really all you can do with it now is make a joke there's no solution nothing's gonna fix Th- there is a solution but we're not <laughs> we're talking about like is beyond Palestine? hitler yeah, level the final solution <laughs> yeah the, the final countdown if you will <laughs> you remember right, dr Katz, squiggle vision was all yeah. comedians doing therapy? Yeah, I remember Dr. Bits. Katz. I wish they would do something like that again. Are we going to take a break? Yeah, we should take a break, and we'll be right back. Boom. All right, we're back talking about wrestling with Aaron. So in the 80s, there was a guy named Ravishing Rick Rude. Love him. That would yeah, always Rick kiss a girl for good luck mm-hmm. beforehand. And we had the, uh, the toys, they're 12-inch rubber wrestlers. You could throw it off a roof mm-hmm. onto the driveway, and it was fine smash them against anything so we were super fans in the 80s you know hacksaw jim duggan yep hillbilly jim yeah. Yeah. Iron Sheik. dog and jyd all, yeah, yeah. The iwan chic yes. uh, the champ one who just died who yeah. just passed so i was watching you know wrestling saturday morning afternoon and it was during the hype of wrestlemania which i didn't know that that was a local thing like it was only at the Glen Burnie arena in maryland and it was only up and down the east coast they publicized it the wwf was i thought it was worldwide because that's the name of World it. Wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I didn't know it was an East Coast thing. So Ravishing Rick Rude comes out. What year is this? Oh, 85, 4, okay. 6, something like that. I was 7 or 8 or 9. He comes out. He brings a girl in from the audience to kiss for good luck. She's hot. She takes the microphone from him. She goes, I'm not going to kiss you. And he goes, why is that? I had no idea this was all scripted. You know, <laughs> I thought I was riveted like it's a soap opera Mm -hmm. i was like holy fuck she's not gonna kiss what the fuck and uh she goes i'm not gonna kiss you he goes why is that and she said my husband is here she gives the microphone back to him he goes what does your husband do and she goes professional wrestling (laughs) and jake the snake roberts comes running down the aisle with a chair and fucks up ravishing rick rude and puts the snake on him and I was, and then they were like, "This fight will be continued at, at WrestleMania, you know, five, mm-hmm. at the Glen Burnie Arena in Maryland." Sign up for pay. I ran upstairs, Dad. We got to go to WrestleMania. <laughs> I didn't even know it was here. It's at the Glen Burnie Arena. We can take the metro from Vienna to there, the DC Metro. Let's go. It was during dinner, and my dad was like, "I'll call him and find out." Right before dinner, we're sitting at the dinner table, and I see him go, "Hello." I got that one eight hundred number. I wrote it down from the TV. Yes, WrestleMania, Glen Burnie Arena. How much? Josh, wrestling's fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, can we go to see the monster trucks are real, right? Can we go see the monster trucks instead? <laughs> Same phone call. How much? The monster trucks are st- that's stupid. <laughs> We're not going to do that. That's hilarious. 
that's what I'm going to end up at with my kids at some point. Like, but they're, they're so deep into it. Like they, like I said, they enjoy wrestling more than I do. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're, and you do wrestling podcasts. I, uh, for a while I did. Yeah. <laughs> but here, like I, I had like gotten out of wrestling. Like after the NWO, after WCW fell, after the rock left to go be right, a right. movie star. Like, I mean, I, like a lot of people, I fell out Yeah, and I only kept up with wrestling through video games. I, every year I got whatever the new wrestling video game whatever was. I got WWE, that, yeah. and I would then like tune in to WWE for a couple weeks just to figure out who these new people are yeah. on the fucking game. Like, who's this motherfucker? I ain't never seen him. <laughs> what? Well, it's a Mr. Kennedy, right? So I'd watch it just to see what that was. But then within a month, I'm out of it mm-hmm. again. Uh, but at that same time, like me and my pops weren't. We didn't. We weren't. We didn't. We didn't have a relationship. Uh, so then when I reconnected with my dad. He was always trying to talk about wrestling. And I was like, man, I don't watch no goddamn wrestling. What are you talking about? <laughs> so then, like, to uh, to help us reconnect, I started tuning in to Monday Night Raw and watching wrestling again because that's what my dad was still into. Right. And I'm like, fuck, you still watch wrestling? <laughs> so You still follow us. He yeah. plays Destiny, right? Did you say he plays? Yeah, that's all he plays. Yeah, my son's trying to find him online. He's like, I want to play wrestling. I want to play Destiny with Aaron's dad. Uh, <laughs> I think his name is Iron Hair. Okay. Um, he but, got a friend invite from somebody. I was like, I don't know who that is. Oh, my dad don't invite nobody. But uh, but he, so he, I had started watching wrestling again so that we could have something to talk about. Yeah. when we like, cause I, Me and my dad didn't have a relationship for 16 years. So we're like just getting to know each other again, and that was an easy way for us to start conversations, yeah, just talk right. about what happened on wrestling this right. week. Next thing you know, I was like, I'm fucking watching wrestling every Monday, and I'm taking, you know, Ashley, who was my girlfriend at the time, like now my wife, but like we just get together, and it's like, yeah, we got to go watch Monday Night Raw. They're in town, and yeah, all that. So then now she's coming to wrestling shows with me and stuff, yeah. and and uh, had had it not been for me reconnecting with my dad, yeah. I wouldn't be watching that shit, and I don't know what my kids would be into right now. <laughs> Maybe they'd be better human beings, but uh, because they're not watching fucking dudes with no shirts and spandex no, on like resolving their it. issues with their with fucking violence. Feet. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like it brought everybody together nicely. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, something. how how really though? How is that any different from watching you know football, a, a football, or a or a TV show yeah, where people are shooting that, at each other? Be you know, it's not, babies yeah. or pogs yeah. or Pokemon or whatever. Like my, my yeah. kids don't know anything about playing. Like we were young, we played guns. Yeah. You yeah. know, we just run outside. You play guns yeah. and shit. My We're kids dead. don't know nothing about no playing guns, but they know about a super kick. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> they know how to throw a fucking yeah. uh, a super kick and get that leg slap in there. <laughs> <laughs> Have you? Do you ever read comics? You reading comic books? I wasn't a big comic book dude. Um, the Walking Dead guy Robert Kirkman just got the license for Transformers and GI Joe comics. I heard that the new Transformers movie was amazing. That was the best of. Let's go. All of the Let's Transformers. Let's take the voice. You think Alonzo can go? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Let's go, man. I'm, I'm waiting go. for Walter. We're gonna go like during the, the during the day sometime. Yeah, go watch the new Transformers. Yeah, all right. I'm Rise down. of the Beast. It's Unicron again from the '80s. Okay, from the cartoon, the Planet Guy. Okay, Unicron is back. But I haven't like I've I've missed like the last two Transformer movies. Like the the, the at, I stopped with the original trilogy. Yeah, because Transformers Three: Dark Side of the Moon that was like the dopest shit to me. Like that movie, that movie came out the same year as Mass Effect Three. Yeah. And there were the parallels between so the things. two yeah. were so dope to me. That whole scene when the building is falling over and they're sliding down, yeah. like, yeah, it's like, it's like the, Advent Children, right? Right. <laughs> the 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 level of peril in that movie mirrored kind of like when you're sitting and playing Mass Effect and you're on Earth and the the, the last part of the game and the Reapers are attacking and you're fighting through London. That's what Transformers Three felt like to me. And I was like, "There's, I don't need to see another Transformers because you ain't gonna do no better than Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, Sly, you already got rid of Megan Fox yeah. and her no thumb having ass. But then now, <laughs> I, now you're getting rid of Shia LaBeouf who was sliding down this thing, chasing this British. Anyway, yeah, like I, that was the greatest Star Wars, or not Star Wars, excuse me, Transformers shit I had ever seen. Yeah. I think at this point, Transformers movies are kind of like Fast and Furious movies. You don't really yeah. need to have watched any of the other ones. Just like, yeah, just watch the watch yeah. the action. Pretty colors. Yeah. I'm a huge dork about it. I was begging for Transformers when I was little. It hit like right when I was nine, mm-hmm. and when we moved into our neighborhood, well, I got my son into it again. He thinks it's cool. Dad thinks it's cool. And then that was when they started doing combiners again. So the 
it was Optimus Prime was the big middle guy, mm-hmm. and his shoulders had notches on them, and you could get Sideswipe and Wheeljack and all the other guys and put them and make the arms and make a huge one. Okay. It was like everything I wanted when I was little. Yeah, yeah. But they, I, we couldn't afford it, or they wouldn't. They got me like the little bumblebee. But, you know, now I got the money, and I'm in charge. I'm like, we're going to get them all. We're going to wait until they're on sale, and we're going to get every single one of them. So that I can, I still have them. I still play with them. I still put them together and make huge robot poses. Yeah, I've got it. I've got nine. I got ten of them. So I've got enough to make two huge combiner guys, so I can make dioramas. <laughs> my uh, my Transformers was He Man. Yeah, but so, I was like three or four. I was like th- when he was nine. I was you know four. So yeah. Uh, so I was. I, I Transformers would come on, and I didn't really care about it. I just wanted to watch He Man. I time. was with you. I was He yeah. Man guy, and so I was in the Philippines. So like my upbringing. Those early years was a lot different than everybody else's. You had good cartoons. You had real cartoons. Uh, I mean, if you liked the Japanese stuff, yeah. Like, cause I, like I, but I didn't get. We didn't have any of the popular shit here. We had right. like the top, like top forty, right over there. We didn't have. I didn't know about Sugar Hill Gang. I wasn't no, hearing right. no. I wasn't hearing no hip hop. I wasn't hearing R and B. I wasn't yeah. hearing. I wasn't even hearing good rock. I was hearing Bon Jovi. I was hearing whatever they played on Air Force Radio, on yeah. Air Armed Forces yeah. Radio, and Armed Forces Television. So like we got, like I was behind. Yeah. So, but the cartoons I got there, like I had Transformers, I had He Man like yeah. a bug, but I also had Brave Star. I love Brave Star. You, yeah. You fuck with Brave Star? Yeah. It's, it's that it was that futuristic western. Yes. That was my first exposure to that, like mixing western with like future. Yes. He had the stuff. horse yeah. named Thirty Thirty, and it was yeah, a metal yeah, horse yeah. and. He used to do Strength Cyborg of the Bear, <laughs> Eye of the Eagle. Did you know that it was only on for like one season? Man, it, it made felt like impact. it was on forever. Right? I had all the fucking toys. Yeah. I had the horse. I nice. had him. I had Tex, yeah. Tex Hex, the bad guy. Yeah, I had his I, toy. I had one of those, yeah. I had all them shits. Like, and when I came back from the Philippines, I'm like, oh, y'all fuck with Brave Star? They're like, the fuck are you yeah, talking about, that? weirdo? Yeah. Fuck, <laughs> this yeah. fucking weird guy talking about yeah. all these weird cartoons and shit. Uh, Gangnam Force and all that was over there. <laughs> Um, we there used was to one... make fun of the Japanese missile defense system because we're like, ours shoot straight, but theirs have to go like all around in a bunch of twirlies before they hit the target. <laughs> so we should be fine if we ever go up against them because they have a big fanfare of missiles before it right. actually hits. <laughs> we, uh, you know, I had, I had, I, I, stuff. I, I had lots of G.I. Joe, too. Well, so G.I. I, Joe was hot. Mask. He, meant, he meant mask. I love mask. Uh, did you, do you remember those ones that were called Battle Beasts? And they oh, had, they were like yeah. these little, they're like muscle men, but they were like little things. And they had holograms on their chest. Yeah. And there was yeah. the water the guys, the fire guys. Yeah. There's the water guys, the fire guys, and the, the wood guys. The one you guys. put your thumb on, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you remember those guys? Too. Yes. Like, I love those. Water I hadn't thought fire. about that in 30 something years. They're called years. battle beasts, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Wood yeah. beats water. Yeah, wood water beats water, water beats Yeah. Fire beats wood. It's like rock, paper, scissors, but it was little muscle men size guys. Yeah. But they had joints. They had articulation. Yeah, yeah, I remember those. I wonder if I have any of those. Aaron, anymore. we forgot to ask you your pronouns. I'm sorry. We don't really do that. We do, we ask people their adverbs <laughs> in this show. My adverbs are dangerously and uh, ubiquitously. Ubiquitously, <laughs> yeah. Right. My yeah. my my ad adverbs or adjectives. Adverbs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or adjectives, whatever you want. As long as it's not pronouns. Anything he, but pronouns. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. here and there. The pronouns are <laughs> banned on this podcast. <laughs> y'alls and y'alls. <laughs> Bruh and do. <poo>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I came up with a I came up with the idea the other day uh, that my pronouns are he him but they're the opposite. So yeah, and every time you say you would say he you have to say him and any time you have to say he you would normally say he you have to say or him you have to say he. So it's like him went to go get he money out the bank. Uh-huh. That sounds like uh Bernie Mac, him downstairs. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Him yeah. downstairs, the milk and cookie. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's my that's my requirement is that you have to swap I would, he and him. I would to. just shoot you. I don't <laughs> have time. You're making me get do too pistol, much work Dad. in my brain. Tell yeah. your uncle to get the pistol. We're going down to seven mile. I'm gonna shoot he. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot he right in his right in him right face. In him face. <laughs> <laughs> did you get anything for Father's Day? Did you ask? Did you get requests? Did they ask? Nah, you man, what I don't you ask for shit. I don't ask for nothing for Father because I'm not giving nothing for Mother's Day. So I don't ask for yeah. shit. Well, you know, what do food. you get for the girl that has everything? You know, right? right. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we like uh, we don't make a big deal of those holidays. Like. Um, I asked for a nap, and then I was like, you know what? I'll take a nap when I'm dead. I'd rather be with them. I, uh, I, I, we ate. I, like, let me just chill on the couch and play some video games. Yeah. And if, if y'all want to play, like, we ended up playing Gang Beast, 
nice. uh, for a few hours, and like that was dope. You know, like let's play some video yeah. games Didn't without you gotta me. Figure out what's cross platform that we can all play together because we got controllers. Uh, there's a couple games that are PS5, Xbox that we could get it. With. Walter loves gang. Games. Yeah, well, oh, does he? Again, just like Fight Night, there's I'm not happy with the physics on that game. It's no, too but gummy. They're, they're ridiculous. But it is fun to throw each other in a spiky twirly. Yeah, it's it's fun that that I know that nobody in this house can beat me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I can fuck around because at no point do I feel threatened they're, wait, they're by king the, of the challenge. Mountain. King of the mountain. Wait until yeah. your boy gets older and he has more time than you to game. He's going to rock you. That's what's happening in my house. Here's the thing. I don't have no time who, to who play. Who allots the time? <laughs> <laughs> I do. My dad used to, my dad, I, when we went upstairs, I, first thing I said, bases loaded two. Right, right, right. My dad and I used to play bases loaded two on NES in the den when I was a kid, like crazy. Double and dribble. He, uh, he, that too. <laughs> but we would, uh, I remember like when I started finally getting to the point where like I was competitive. Yeah. And then he would start sending me outside in the summer more and more. <laughs> you need to go play. <laughs> yeah. And then I finally beat my dad for the first time in bases loaded two. And he was hot. Yeah. Like, it's the middle of the middle of the day, and you know when you finally beat Dad, it's yeah, you. I beat. I'm doing all, and he's like, it's over. And Retire he goes, champion. He goes, get the fuck out this house. <laughs> get the fuck, get get the fuck out this house, and don't come back till I tell you. And he locked the door when I walked out, and I came, and I didn't realize he was. He meant that I came back to get some water like 30 minutes later, and the door's locked, and I'm looking in the window, and I'm and I'm not Dad. He's Go on now, and he's playing bases yeah. loaded too. He's got <laughs> he's got to get more that. reps in. Yeah, and he, yeah. That's the worst. That's worse than you're grounded or I'm disappointed. Is get out of here. I don't even want to look at you right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> disgusting. Motherfucker, beat me. That he ain't gonna beat me pong. no more. I started beating everybody at ping pong, and they all quit playing ping pong with me. And I got to play ping pong with my 70 year old dad last weekend, and he kept up. He was lunging. Oh wow. He went into the wall a couple times. It was close. So last time we had Adrian on here, he was talking about how much I farted in the movie theater. Yeah. He was all mad. Yeah. <laughs> so he was talking about making the show where we uh, mix Mexican food with movies. <laughs> pick a bad Mexican restaurant <laughs> in a long movie and go to the uh, indie movie in the small theater yeah. and just destroy everybody. In the you know it would be a better game? <laughs> clear it out. Get a, get uh, cheap Mexican food. Everybody goes into the movie and see who can go to longest without farting. Yeah. Oh, the as Seinfeld you, maneuver. Is that as you fart, you gotta once you fart, you gotta get up and leave yeah. and see who the last man standing is. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be uncomfortable. Domain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How to make it to the end? Oh man. We've been having a uh, religious discussion about where the soul is located in the body. You know, we have have some people that believe and some people don't believe, and it's a whole existential thing. But you know, I like to ask if a doctor could say where the spirit is. If you're going to save yourself and all this, you know, show me where it's at. If that's a thing, a part of you that you think is going to live forever. Mm -hmm. That seems pretty important. So it should be somewhere in the anatomy. But it's, you know, it's another dimension. This is just like the same argument with girls about squirting. Where is it at? Where does it come from? Is it piss? Nobody doctors don't even know. What the fuck? It's, it's pee. It is pee? Yeah. they've Maybe I think girls squirt sure, like, from their soul. <laughs> they're squirting it, from it, first it's of all anybody anybody place. that wholeheartedly believes that it's pee yeah has never made that shit happen and never tasted it and never uh, yeah or or you just had a dirty bitch piss on you yeah. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's just you just need yeah. to make better choices okay if, you, if you did either way but maybe she did it from her spirit and her soul and that's the only way you can get it going because <laughs> it's a deep down thing well that that's why most so many people in my life have called me their soulmate yeah there you go because i have a way of <laughs> piss, have a way of <laughs> engaging that little valve that little yeah it's a um, Something behind that hood, I know yeah. where to touch it. They, they accepted you into their heart as their Lord and Savior. Oh, they accepted me somewhere. I got two kids for it. <laughs> you found the answer within. Remember when we were little and uh, retards couldn't talk good and you could find them? <laughs> and you knew, like, who was retarded? You still do. You just can't call no, them No, now that. there's a whole spectrum of, like, people that are just annoying. You still know who they are, part though. of the same... No, you got to get to there, know somebody. There's people that want to act like they are. I'm on the spectrum, and yeah. it's like... <laughs> No, bitch. You, You're on you TikTok. Got, you got yeah. cable through Spectrum. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. We're you on ain't... Spectrum now. We're no, on Time I... Warner. Yeah. Until I see a single strand of drool go from your lip 
and also be touching your shoe at the yeah. same time. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, don't try to act like you got some special thing. I can. You can smell it because you're you annoying. Can, you can smell it you when you get around the real ones. They have this certain <laughs> the real ones. The real ones have a <laughs> smell. There's the, that chromosome that's yeah. missing emits. The, their pH balance is off a little bit. Now you come around me smelling like uh, jupe or or goddamn <laughs> curve. Cool water. Orbits. I know you ain't. If you smell like Axe, I know you're not on. You're not really. You just want attention. <laughs> There's a lot of like places cool on water. the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> I wore that in high school. Did you wear that in high school? <laughs> no, I didn't wear that in high school. You didn't wear that in high school? <laughs> no, I didn't. Get, I wasn't allowed to get cool water until I got to college. I was still wearing. I was still wearing Brute and Old Spice. Oh, yeah. Some Stetson. <laughs> the Polo. <laughs> or, or I, the only real cologne I was able to wear in high school was Jupe. And that's because my uncle, my uncle James. Was the jupe man? Oh, really? And he so he had jupe soap, jupe deodorant, jupe cologne. He was the guy that put on way too much jupe. He always <laughs> smelled like jupe. Right. So of course he would give me jupe, and it was like I can smell like saddlewood, uh-huh. or I can smell like a South Detroit pimp. Right. <laughs> I'll go. Well, I'll go with bitch. Better have my money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember this move for getting laid where you would uh, start talking to a girl about a movie and then be like, oh, yeah, I have that on DVD, but the DVD player is only in my room, so you want to go watch the movie? Bro, like the 2003 I told, I, version of Netflix yeah. and, and shit. And the only place to sit in the room is on the bed. I told you. So it's a lock. I only mess with girls that, that drink they, they drink <laughs> they alcohol out of a can. Yeah. <laughs> so there is no conversation when it gets to that point. <laughs> It's too late. It's just I just have to get her there before she can't walk anymore, because nobody's gonna help me carry her into the room so I can do my thing. So I just got to get her in there first, and then have another sip of that natty light. <laughs> it's a sparkly natty light. <laughs> we I wonder if guys do that now where they're like, oh, I only have that streaming service in my room, or like you know, broke dudes try to talk. Like, yeah, shit the Roku's like, just in my room. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's on Tubi, but I only have Tubi in my room. And the girl's like, well, I think I just got my Tubi's tied because I don't want to go in your room and watch Tubi with you. You're broke. I only got two. Was Tubi's free? Isn't it the free one? It is free. Yeah. So you know that uh, the uh, JRPG trope where there's a dot 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 question mark mm-hmm. quotes. Mm-hmm. You seen that in any of those games where somebody will say dot 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 question mark and you're like, supposed uh-huh. to. That's yeah. that's the link thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's or is it the Tim Allen? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah. On uh, I was playing Road ninety six, and uh, and I was playing it with my wife, and they have like you know the option of things to say, and there's the dot dot dot, and she would never choose that, and she was like, finally asked, what is this dot dot dot? I was like, do you don't understand what dot 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 means? It's improv. The, it's the it's the it's silent the stoic. It's yeah. just don't you're not gonna say nothing, yeah. and then let's see what happens. Yeah. And she's like. Oh, well, then she decided that she would rather say something that she didn't want to say than to go with dot, <laughs> dot, dot. It's like, uh, that's one way to play the game, I suppose. Dot, dot, dot. That's how you, uh, that's that's like the, the if you want to play through the game, is John Wayne or, you know, like the guy, like the, the like silence, Keanu Reeves. Reeves like, yeah, that's John Wick. Like, I'm up, yeah. yeah. I'm, oh, I'm not going to say that's anything. You're the second person to talk about Road 96. I keep getting that. Is, is, do you like it? It's cool. I mean, I, I just I spent like last week playing it, and it's 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 different. It's interesting. Uh, you got your wife to play a video game with you. That's an achievement right there. Achievement uh, unlocked. It has to be a certain type. Like I I I bought. Girls love Mass Effect because of the romance options. Uh, that's too <gasps> that's too that's too complicated for? for my wife. But yeah. like Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah. Grand, well, I got her on Grand Theft Auto Four. Yeah. Being a being a Nico. Yeah. And she was all about Nico's crazy. <laughs> and then uh, Grand Theft Auto Five comes out, and you have the three storylines and yeah. stuff, three characters. And I I bought that, um, and I was like, "Happy birthday! Yeah. I got you Grand Theft Auto Five because yeah. you know how much you love <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Four. And she's like, "You sure you didn't just buy Grand Theft? No, this is for you. That's all my Star Wars <laughs> figures. It's for the baby. It's for you. And I then, yeah, for the yeah, and then when I the when, I when I beat the game, she's like, "Oh, so you went ahead and beat my birthday game?" Yeah. I was like. <laughs> And what had happened was <laughs> your Homer, Homer Simpson bought the bowling ball for Mars for her birthday. Yeah, I bought me Grand Theft Auto Five for your birthday. Yeah, there's um there's a few games that like she can get down with that like that that like that she I know the type of shit she likes. Yeah, and and I don't like feeling guilty about wanting to play my goddamn video games. So sometimes Jewish. it's okay. easier to incorporate. Yeah, and so like once a year or so I'll find a game that's like 
All right, this is kind of off the beaten path, but it's some shit that she might actually fuck with. Okay. And I'll get her to play that. Once a year, the pun far. And then she's Amazing like, season. yes, <laughs> once, a, once a year, she's like, ah, yeah, this is fun. And they're like, yeah, now let's play Gang Beast. And she does that. And he's like, oh, we're having a good time. This is family time. And I go, yeah, it is. Yeah. Now, go away. <laughs> Don't ask me anything else. Go outside, boy. About Lock any, the door. All Don't of come you. Back. All of you. Yes. All of you get out the house. I have to get better at these games. <laughs> <laughs> like father, like son. Yes. <laughs> We had uh, Adrian and Aiden over to go swimming at Duncan's house. Yeah. And I was throwing my kid off my shoulders. And you know, Adrian's little brother, Aiden, is tiny. Yeah. So he comes up to me in the pool. He's 20. And he goes, Josh, can I ride you? <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, can you launch me off your shoulders? Like, what? I was like, yeah, sure. You're a tiny little baby yeah. boy. He got on my shoulders. I launched him. He bruised my shoulder. Because I never had a man that large stand on me. <laughs> right. It looked like I had a hickey on my shoulder. <laughs> From Aiden asking me if he could ride me. I got a, sh- yeah. I got a hickey now. Uh, did you all see the TMNT movie when you were little? Oh, yeah. The, the original? Live? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the 89 one. Remember the Foot Clan bar? Yeah. Yeah, with Sam, with Sam. What's his name? Um, uh, Moon. Jones. Sam Moon. Uh, the guy from Moon. Jesus. Sam Rockwell. Sa- Sam Rockwell is the guy in oh. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The was like, he? The guy's like, you got any cigarettes? He goes, regular or menthol? Uh. That's uh, that's Sam Rockwell. He must have been was like it? seven. Yeah. yeah, he was like probably 20. I had the tape 18. of that, too. Somebody needs, there's so many like Kung Fu Arcade and all these pinballs. Somebody could conceivably do yeah, they could make the foot a clan foot clan hangout bar. from teenage with a half the pipe movie. and a dj and, and cigarettes well it, insurance <laughs> would be a nightmare if you got a half pipe and, and it, uh, it would smell like axe yeah. really yeah. hard in there like it would the, the kids still spray an axe all over themselves yeah they do yeah, yeah. they do Ugh. it incels and axe is like <laughs> a terrible combination that's what that shit would smell like it would not be a place that it you'd smells wanna... like not getting pussy yeah you know like <laughs> like um uh uh try what? hard the, uh, Noir. It makes me think of um, oh my god, Russian guys in track suits. A lot, yeah. a lot in of track suits. Okay, yeah, yeah. That no, know, that yeah. smell. It only works for runaways in an arcade, right? Or Russian guys in track suits. They're the only ones that smell like that. Yeah. yeah. Why is there no strip clubs with a pool? You could build a, a circle. Because building. those germs stay. <laughs> like no, chlamydia lives chlorine. in water. Chlorine, just naked. So the v- the pool is a VIP area. So the building's a circle. There's an atrium. You pay the cover to get in, but then I mean, you got to pay another God cover. God damn, if I'm going to be in a pool and I see somebody else's nut floating on top of the water <laughs> past me, I'll be goddamn. That's you worse than me. a Band-Aid. You get, out of, <laughs> you get out of the pool and you got somebody else's nut in your chest hair, I'd have to burn this place down. This i got to kill everybody. This is an idea that Josh has been working on for a while. Yeah. And I'm like, and, and it's one of those like, why? No. It's the strip club with the pool in it. No, yeah, no, no. You bring the strippers to the hotel with the pool. Okay. Right. You don't just one. get into... I, I, I might just I might nut. eat a steak from a strip club, but I will not immerse yeah. myself in waters. <laughs> yeah. They used to have that place here in Austin with the, the hot tubs, mermaids. Get out and, with glitter all over you. The glitter and nut, yeah. That's no thank you. You can't get around <laughs> that. I think it was I think there's a couple there's a couple of spots in Witcher Three where you go into like a bathhouse where there's just a bunch of women sitting yeah. around topless and dudes just hanging out. And I think that's where I got the idea from. I think it's it's one of those like you don't want to be wearing those ideas. polarized sunglasses because then you'll see the surface of everything. We had a, a meeting at work on Monday and we keep it's with a bunch of contractors and we tell them to mute their mics, but this dude just came on and was like, "I'm going to tell them us that they're fucking wasting our time and fuck them it, out loud." So everybody heard this guy go, "I'm going to tell your company, fuck you, you're wasting our time." And then we were like, we would like to remind everybody to mute their mics. And then he goes, fuck yeah, fish tacos. <laughs> like, hey, mute your mic. <laughs> and then another guy came on and turned his mic on just to go, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> 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 it's all recorded. <laughs> so there's Russian uh, face. There were Russian Facebook election bots that mm-hmm. were influencing. Now I'm getting a similar thing, posting all this stuff on Instagram. I'm getting Arabian uh, promotion bots. I'm getting these people messaging me every time I... Th- so I was told by a social media person that to tag the location on everything. So everything I put on Instagram, I put Austin. Well, now I'm getting all these messages from somebody named Pavinder that says, promoted on Texas Vibes page. Oh, yeah. You know Pavinder? 
Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Chagangra. Yeah, yeah. Prevender <laughs> the Contender. That's There's what we call him. <laughs> Prevender Parker from Pre- Spider-Man Pre- Across the Universe. Prevender the friend, Pretender. My friend. <laughs> my friend. Yeah. And then Russia's got this, the private people coming over to take over. They were going to take over the government, the private... The mercenaries? The mercenary army. That's Metal right? Gear all over again. Yo, that yeah. shit, that, when that shit happened two days ago, yeah. uh, that, like, the news of that, like, the two top trending things on Twitter were Zuck versus Musk. Yeah. Right. And then right below that was Wagner. Yeah. And I was like, hold on. Y'all over here talking about a Russian coup and a goddamn two billionaires yeah. wanting to fight each other. We're- Go fuck yourselves, we're, all of you. I don't yeah. believe not a damn word of any of this shit. Until I see blood world, from one of those right. bitches' noses, or until I see somebody blowing up something, I yeah. get the until, fuck out of here with until this. Until they're like, Putin has been assassinated. Yeah. Right. This, is, this is just such a clown world. Ever since 2016, things just don't make any sense. Nope. That's it's a, just everything's like, ooh, yeah, the two biggest billionaires in the world are going to fight each other in the octagon. Oh, I wonder what happened in 2016 that would have made something like that happen. I don't know. There's a military-industrial illusion of democracy, and we're worried about a submarine with five billionaires in it. All right. I hope they're going to be okay. We watched uh, About My Father, the Sebastian movie. I don't know that. Sebastian Maniscalco, Maniscalco made yeah. a movie uh-huh. about his dad, and De Niro played his dad. Was it good? It, it depends. You know, it's a family <laughs> family fun movie. Okay. Uh, that and The Machine both came out, which are like, I was pumped. Yeah. Cool. Mis- comedians are getting movies off of a bit mm-hmm. about something that's like a five-minute thing, and now it's a whole movie. They both, neither of them did well, so it doesn't bode well, but it was fun watching. I heard The Machine was fun, though. It's fun. It's good. It's not bad. Okay. Uh, it's the same, you know, he used to be ripped and then he comes back when he's old and all these Russians are like, but you have titties now. <laughs> they kept saying that joke over and over again. They, they burned it into the ground. But watching Sebastian Maniscalco riff with De Niro was rad because he dabbles in comedy every once in a while. You right. Know? He did the King of Comedy and he's done like Bad Grandpa and all this. But what, he did the, not Bad Grandpa. He other. did uh, Meet the Fockers. Yeah. yeah the, and uh, He's good. The, the, what was the other one? Analyze This? No, that was Jack. Yeah, analyze no, this and analyze no, that. He was, he was the guy in Analyze yeah. This. He was? Okay, Billy cool. Crystal all right, all right. right. Not the anger management He's one, been doing comedy for a while. Yeah, it's yeah, fun yeah. to watch like expert actors play around in the comedy space. Mm-hmm. Like You see a lot of big people. Like Heath Ledger was like, oh, I loved playing Joker because it was fun to be a bad guy for a little while. And you could t- t- stretch your chops. So fun that you die. Yeah. <laughs> he had a, lot, a little too much fun. But, it, it, you know, that's a level of, of acting where you're like, Treating comedy as a side hobby. Like, yeah, yeah, I'll try that. That sounds like fun. I'm right. A drama genius. Maybe I'll fuck around in your little silly world for a little bit and have fun with it. Oh, this is cute. Yeah. This is cute. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what y'all do. No, no, you guys can have the rest What are you guys doing, it. jokey jokes? Yeah. I can do a jokey joke. I'm going to go over here and be for real now. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes, though, they find, like, a like a, a hidden talent in it. Like, um, freaking John Cena was the best part of Trainwreck. You know the stuff that he yeah. was saying. So every once in a or while, or like Chris you know, like Hemsworth, like when Chris he Hemsworth found the when he found the comedy in Thor, yeah, like right. when he found a yeah. way to like just have fun with Thor, like it completely changed the entire character. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a. I think it's an important part of being a good actor if you can get laughs. You're controlling people's emotions the same mm-hmm. way as any. You know, acting is reacting. I heard Will Arnett cheated on Amy Poehler. That's why they broke up. And I was imagining that he probably started cheating her on her when he got Lego Batman. <laughs> Because, you know, he got full of himself, and he's like, bitch, I'm Batman. She's like, what the fuck ever? You're Lego Batman. <laughs> she's like, fuck you. <laughs> it's like, it's like, the, it's like the security guard who thinks he's a cop. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> Calm Batman. down, Paul You're Bart. not Michael Keaton. You're right. Lego Batman. That's right. nothing. Lego Batman goes kind of hard, though. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah. That was such a good movie. My oldest kid is going into the eighth grade, and I told her, uh, once you complete eighth grade, you'll be halfway done with school. She was like, there's 16 grades? And I was like, yeah, if you go do college, you're talking about doing college, That's you'll be done. You're halfway done. And then my son was like, when am I halfway done with school? And I was like, sixth grade. You're not uh, <laughs> going to be going to college. <laughs> <laughs> sixth grade is the halfway point for you. You're going to be doing pretty good. I was watching the videos of dogs, people, dog owners pretending to drown. To see if their dog would jump in after him. Yeah, to see if the dog would save them. I feel like there's a common thread between all of those dog owners, but continue. If you fool your dog into thinking they saved your life, what do treats mean anymore? <laughs> the whole rest of the time with the dog. you go, Here you go, I'm giving you a treat. The dog's like, bitch, you, I saved you, owe me. 
Yeah. Your life. Yeah. It's like a Chewbacca life debt. You're going to give me a treat? So yeah. now I sleep in the bed. You're supposed to be human. dead. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> I saved your life, human. You sleep on the floor. I'm now the alpha. What's this common thread? Oh, they're all white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> People wanting credit for shit that they didn't do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just a test. Right. Uh, black people don't have enough water to pretend like we're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I got time for that shit. I got bills to what pay, motherfucker. Pool jokes in your yeah. backyard with your pool. Ha, 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 ha. So, uh, yeah, we're reaching the end here. You have plugs? You got something coming up? Anything you want to? Family Man, YouTube? Family Man's out right now. Oh, yeah, YouTube, you... uh, check that out. The new album uh, I'm working on. Hopefully um, we didn't burn your Nebraska material on here. <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll be straight. But uh, I think we'll probably be recording the new album in a couple months. So look for early 2024. The next the next special will be dropping. Hell yeah. Um, got to do a test run of it last night. So uh, I'm feeling very confident that in the next couple months we can tighten this shit up. And yeah. So stay out, look out for that. Um, Bootleg Media coming. That's a company that I'm, I'm uh, launching with Rebecca Trent from the Creek in the Cave. And Justin Palermo, uh, the guy that shot, uh, that shot the uh, the Family Man. Um, it's a it's a platform for comedy enthusiasts. So if you're a comedy, not a comedy lover, not a comedy junkie, uh -huh. if you're somebody that really appreciates the art, and, and, and we're trying to we're trying to cultivate and curate a, an audience, a community, I should say, okay. of comedy enthusiasts, uh, a place where you can find shit and connect with other comedians and co comic enthusiasts, uh, like a social network, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Basically, we're uh -huh. funny people just yell shit in the air. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. So um, the wall to see what sticks. We got we got a bunch of stuff coming up. Um, I don't know of any any shows that are coming up anytime relatively soon. It doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, no, go check keep, out Family Man yeah, and keep please keep your going. keep your eyes out for uh, the next special, which I think is while while I can, while I remember. All right. While I remember. What, what's your Twitter? Twitter, um, Twitter, Instagram, everything. TikTok, yeah. YouTube. It's all. At underscore Aaron Cheatham. Everything is at underscore Aaron Cheatham. Okay. All right. Yes. Thank you guys. This is dope. Hey, yeah. And I could have walked to this motherfucker. This is, <laughs> yeah, this is dope. I mean, I we do it, it every week. Anytime you want to come by, we're here. Bet. Yeah. And awesome. I'll catch you next time. Bye.